The Truck Show Podcast, live from the SEMA Show in Las Vegas. Presented by Nissan, Banks Power, and Toyo Tires. Woman, how are you feeling about all the lifted trucks with the really skinny tires wrapped around these massive wheels? Uh, Florida has entered the chat. <laughs> yes, they have. I can appreciate anything in, in not my style, but still pretty rad trucks. Uh, the thing for me is they're doing burnouts at uh, like 845. Yes, they were. And I was like, you know what? Nothing like uh, burning rubber in the morning. That's that's how every day should start, especially every day at work. So I think this is going to be a good day. I actually went back to the hotel collapsed for a few hours mm-hmm. and then uh, made it over here. Did you eat or smoke a cigar? Yes. Both. But uh, Not in that order. Okay. So well, maybe it was in that order. Who knows? I haven't eaten today yet. I just, I woke up, got over here because I was so excited for our second show from SEMA. So. Can I ask you a question? You sure. Do you prefer the smoky burnouts from the electrified cars and trucks or good old fashioned fuel burning vehicles? Don't care. Burnout's a burnout. Okay. Don't, don't do that. Don't put me a, one versus the other. <laughs> I love them all. I'm a gearhead. Bring me steam, bring I me just diesel, bring me gas, you like bring me hydrogen. Wine. Hold on a second. It's a fair question because the electric vehicles are like, wee, 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 wee. Because they're, they're like screaming. I don't know. Ken, tires. Ken Block might uh, disagree with you. Did you see his uh, EV video? That thing was pretty I'm rad. not saying that I and, dislike it. I'm saying it's a different sound. And I've been doing SEMA moderation panels. I've been learning about all sorts of stuff like hydrogen. I'm trying to get, uh, I know, yesterday you did a, uh, a really cool panel that I sat in on. And I was actually, I was an attendee and just watched. And I asked the guys for the audio, and we may or may not get it. If we do, it's really informative, and I thought the, the panel will hopefully be on the show. That's what I'm or saying. Or later. Well, no, it'll be a bonus. I guess if we de- get it, it'll I, be a bonus. All right. Well, I guess it depends on how many uh, interviews we get today. It, it's early, uh, although it's not as nice as it was yesterday. It definitely has uh, uh, is a little colder. It looks like there might be some rain. Mm-hmm. But that's not going to stop us because we're here for you, the listener. We are going to go trudging through Las Vegas in 42-degree weather, and we don't care because we love trucks. All right, <laughs> well, we got to thank Nissan for uh, being our presenting sponsor. So if you're looking for a midsize or half-ton truck, head over to your Nissan dealer. Check out the Nissan Frontier, or the Nissan Titan, or Titan XD. Of course, the Titans have the industry's best five-year, 100,000-mile warranty. You can build and price at NissanUSA.com. And when you're clueless about what's actually happening in your truck, like, what is my boost? Is my trans getting too hot? I have no idea. Idea. You have tranny problems? <laughs> yes, I have tranny problems. Okay. We're from LA. Of course, we have tranny problems. <laughs> you need to check out the bank's iDash. The iDash will display hundreds of parameters in gas and diesel vehicles. Uh, how's your exhaust gas temp? Uh, uh, how about your def level? How many miles do you get between your DPF regions? You don't know any of these things. You know why? Because Ford, GM, Ram, they don't want to show you on your dashboard. How do you see this stuff? You get a Banks iDash. You've got two choices, a Banks iDash Super Gauge or an iDash Data Monster. And the Data Monster data logs up to 100 parameters simultaneously at 20 samples per second. It is the most powerful digital gauge that you can buy for your truck. Go to BanksPower.com to learn more about yours. Or if you're a truck at Seaman and you want people to think you have Banks products, get the badge and put it on your door. Uh, I'd prefer you didn't. But uh, <laughs> I'm I'd just re- saying I've seen a lot of trucks. I'm like... Okay, I see the Banks badge on the door, but where's the Banks product? Did where's they, the awesome Ram Air diff cover, people? I think Although there are about a thousand of them here. We did a pretty good job of blanketing the uh, the lifted truck scene with diff covers because I think it's a badge of honor. All right, well, if you need a good tire for that truck, whether it's a performance tire or an off-road tire. No, I'd rather spend $100,000 on my truck and have crap Chinese tires. Well, there's a lot of that here, too. So <laughs> if you want really good tires uh, built right here in the USA, head over to toyotires.com where you check out the open country line of off-road tires and we are especially excited about the Open Country RT Trail, which just got announced and Toyo put on just about every vehicle here at the show. A great tire you can check them out and get a set for your rig. Can we start the show now? Let's do it. The Truck Show. We're going to show you what we know. We're going to answer what the truck, because truck rides with The Truck Show. We have the lifted, we have the lowered, and everything in between. We'll talk about trucks that run on diesel, and the ones that run on gasoline. The truck show, the truck show, the truck show, whoa, whoa. It's the truck show with your hosts, Lightning and Holman. Loud noises, what do I do? Loud noises. (laughs) Are you drunk? I feel like it. I am so freaking punchy. I've been walking around for four days now. I got here Sunday. It's now what, Thursday? I don't know. 
I don't either. It's like, I don't Vegas know. doesn't have clocks. They don't want you to know what time it right? is. Right? I walked out of a hall yesterday at the end of the show, and the sun was still up. And I, for some reason, that surprised me. And I woke up this morning, and the sun was down. And that also surprised me. So I don't know what time it is. You know what, though? I just got a burst of energy. You know why? Because my man Joe Z is here from Taser. How's it going, guys? We meet, finally. Yeah. I feel like I only know you from Facebook now, but now it's in person. Hold on. So now you can be in a don't hug. I'm going to give this guy a hug. hug. No, I'm going to give him a hug. I'm going to give him a hug. (laughs) This is great. It's great to be here. All right. So I saw Joe earlier, and he told me that there's some cool stuff coming, and we should. uh, You should ask him about it. I already know about it. We should ask him. Cooler stuff coming because I already have cool stuff. No, 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 more in my truck. Better. How does it get any cooler than being able to? The mirrors closing when I turn off my truck is the greatest thing ever. It's not the greatest thing. It's definitely I not the greatest I feel like it thing. was the greatest thing. Are you going to top it? I am going to, yeah. If you want to keep your truck. He, so he lives in the ghetto yeah. called Long Beach, California. It's not all truck, ghetto. It's semi-ghetto. And his truck it's parks ghetto outside. <laughs> and there's a very high probability that somebody is going to relieve him of his TRX at some point. And Can most, you help most him? Like, most likely will, yeah. Uh, <laughs> come on now. Come on now. Unfortunately, the Hellcats, the TRXs, most Mopars, they're, they're super easy to steal. Don't ask me how. I, as you know, I'm not going to tell you. But uh, you know, quick five minute look up on Google, and you'll find. Is it out through how. the key fob or what? Like the GM? Remember? He's not going to tell you. He just he, told you. He, he, can, he can elude. Rather he than can focusing elude. on the negative, yeah. Let's focus on how he's going to keep your keys in your hand. Okay. So how are you going to prevent my TRX from being stolen in front of my house? I can prevent your car from being stolen with the keys in the ignition. Well, there's no ignition in, inside the car. Ooh, tell me more. <laughs> I'm so confused how that's possible. So, uh, this hasn't been announced yet, but I guess it is right now. We have a new firmware update where you have to set a pin code using the steering wheel buttons, the cruise buttons. You could set a code from one to six different button presses of seven different buttons. So it's so a lot of possible combinations. Uh, every time you start the truck, you have to enter this code. Uh, and if you don't within 20 seconds, or if you throw it in gear, it instantly will lock up all four brakes. <laughs> that would prevent it from driving away. And it also turns the light show on. So the idea is to draw oh. as much attention as it can. You know, these trucks are not quiet. So three in the morning, someone breaks in through the sunroof and hops in, pairs a key, thinks they're getting away, starts the truck, thinks they're really getting away, throws it in gear, and goes nowhere gets really frustrated and the lights are flashing and now what do you do and at that point i come out of my house with my gun in my hand and order them out of my truck and you have to leave yeah so you already had the line lock technology and just just kind of continued on that and i um use the abs pump so it builds up so much brake pressure instantly that you can floor the trx and it will not move so it'll floor just die, I would assume, right? Or no, it just it'll it, run. Brake, it just brake torques. It, yeah, it just right. won't pu- yeah. push through the uh, through the brakes. Won't push through the brakes. Now, even better, if you left it in four, force rear wheel drive, it'll actually light up the right rear tire, <laughs> 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 drawing even more attention. Now, is this uh, in response to all the guys in Texas? Because for whatever reason, I'm on the same groups that you are on, and it seems like Texas is a hotbed for TRX theft and Hellcat theft. It is, in Chicago. Oh, in Chicago. You see it every day. And on also Long Beach, California. Strangely what are enough. you saying? Are you planning something? No, I'm just saying you're, you're hood. <laughs> like Chicago, <laughs> but on the West Coast. So I, I'm known to leave my keys in the ignition. Uh, you leave the keys in the car, and, you know, at, at, my, at my house all the time. Okay. And I've even seen people posting on Facebook that there are guys that are just going through door to door, just checking every door and every car and hoping that the keys are in. You know, either they steal stuff. Our ring camera, there's people coming in. Either they steal stuff or if the the key's in the car, they steal the car. Right. So I can even rest at night myself because they're not getting it. So this will be available for all DT, Taser DT users or will you spread it wider? Much wider. So, so far I have it for the DT, which Mm -hmm. is 2019 and up DTs. Uh, I have it for all the JLs and JTs. The Taser JL has it. And for the regular Taser, which does the Charger, Challenger, 300, Grand Cherokee, and Durango. And the only thing left out right now is the Taser Ram, which is the 13 and up, uh, 13 to 18, 1500, and 13 to 22 heavy duties. Okay. But I will have it for those. And it's going to take me probably another three or four weeks to get that. Okay. What do you do if you're lightning from the Truck Show podcast and you forget your complex code that starts and unlocks the line lock so I can drive away? Okay, so if you forget the code, <laughs> I had to put something in there because I don't want my customer service. Because it's like, a, I feel yeah. like it's a game controller, up, down, yeah, left, a- right. A- B- you know? B- a- it's Contra yeah, back You can the make day. it as easy as you want. I have up, 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 right, up, up, up. But, you know, it's make it, keep, it, keep it simple, you know. Uh, if you forget it, you can go into the menu while the light show's going and the brakes and the truck's running and select clear pin, 
and you have to put on the brakes, hold the brakes, put on the hazards, and sit there for 10 minutes with the trucks run, truck running and the lights going. Hazards are going. All the lights are flashing. Uh, I figure most criminals are probably not going to sit there with this <laughs> ten minutes. truck sitting there for 10 minutes. It's a right. long time. Uh, so that's the way around it. I'm literally going to go back to my favorite Nintendo cheat code from the 8-bit era, and that's going to be what it is to start the 392. Which is? I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to. Why would I tell you that? A cheat code. So, yeah, I like that. There's one more piece to it, is okay. if you're carjacked. As long as you have the key on you, and most guys have the key in their pocket, uh, if someone yanks you out of the car and the door opens and closes, and they, it'll let you drive off for 20 seconds. After that, it's armed, and as soon as they slow down to five miles an hour, so at some point they got to slow down, uh, it will lock up all four brakes, turn on the lights, and then they're permanently there. That's so brilliant. that way, even, even he, if you hand the key back to them, when like, he you know, pulls me yeah. out of my 392, if I miss as I'm firing back at him, <laughs> I just have to get back to where he's going five yeah. miles an hour, and then I'll take him out. Even if he says, "Give me the key," you hand him the key. Can I carjack anywhere without that? Can I carjack him back out of my Jeep? <laughs> <laughs> well, run me through that again. So the key, I'm, I've got the key in my pocket. I get ejected from the vehicle. He pulls me out. You get in front out, of this, right? And he closes the door. Yeah. And then he realizes you have the key. And he says, give me the key. Fine, take the key. Okay. He drives off. As soon as he slows down, the thing locks. And he, if he doesn't have the pin code, he's not going anywhere. He can turn the car off, start it back up. It just instantly locks back up. It's not going anywhere. There are companies that make alarm systems for these vehicles. Not alarm, like defeat, like... Revel or something like Revelco? that. So Revel, Revel? When you plug it into yes. your dashboard and it looks. Revelco's been around forever. Uh, it's a hardwired kit. Yeah. Right, it seems bad. And you have to take the factory to plug wiring in. and twist all these wires right. to make all this, this different Right, you have to hack into the wiring harness. Yeah. And, and all of the kits that are out there are um, this one. IGLA, I don't know what it stands for. Um, it's a Russian company. They have one. It's a pin code. Because that's who I want to do. But it has to be hardwired in. And you're talking my vehicle. Russian. Russian company. Yeah, hacker. Yeah, yeah what a Russian hacker. I'm yeah. not going to talk about that. <laughs> uh, their kit has to be professionally installed. It's twelve hundred dollars. I've quoted it out. Uh, it permanently hacks into the wiring harness, and it also hacks into the ignition system. So if it fails or if there's anything wrong with it, you can't just unplug it and get back to a running car. So I wanted to get around that. And uh, Revelco, you have to drill holes and hack up the wiring harness. Again, it's expensive. You have to have this key fob on you. You can't use remote start. Uh, I kept remote start. It's plug and play, as you know. There's no issue with um, if you need to remove it and bring the car in for the, to the dealer, you can. You can disable the, the pin function if you want. Right. Um, I threw it in for free with anyone that has the taser. I love it. <laughs> as if that's not enough. I've heard that you're rolling out some other features as well, and you're you're making some other features current for the 22. Well, the 22 took on UConnect 5, the 22 and 23, and there was which some, blows, by the way. Uh, it'll get better. Uh, again, I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, Four super stable in my 392. Just saying. Uh. <laughs> I saw a post from my man Joe who said he was answering guys like, "Hey, I'm thinking about upgrading to, from four to five, and he goes, "Don't." That's all he says. Don't. It's not, in my opinion, worth the trouble. See. So he was surprised that my Wrangler came with four and that I was okay with it. Four is great. It's four is amazing. Four, four works fine. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, what, do, what, why doesn't that have five? I'm like, so ra- I don't need it. Rather than buy a 22 TRX, I bought a Uconnect 5 and made my own harnesses and whatnot and got it to work in the 21 and was able to fix the problems that we had talking to. It was actually problems we had talking to the dash because the Uconnect 5 takes over the dash on a continuous basis. So I had to figure out how to override that. Um, so that works now. And from Facebook forums or from Facebook groups, I found that there was some problems with uh, the Amber DRLs. If you put on the, the wipers, they turned on and <laughs> something weird. Anyway, all that's been fixed. Uh, so this update will take care of 22s, 23s, and have the pin locking in it. All right. Well, some uh, awesome uh, updates from our friend Josie. At what point are you getting into other brands outside of Mopar? Uh, well, I did buy a Bronco quite a, quite a while ago, and um, I haven't... I didn't really dive into it fully just yet. He's working on your I, TRX to make it better. Like, no, honestly, I'm not. Well, I'm, I'm thinking about our listeners. Our listeners yeah, don't all drive our listeners. I'm thinking about our personal <laughs> cars. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I spend a lot of time in the TRX and in the 392. I happen to like those vehicles a lot, so I drive them a lot. And when I drive the cars, I think of things that can improve them. Your, your operation is relatively small. You have a couple employees, right? And it's you. You're yeah. doing most of the hardware and firmware and software. And yet... What you're making is something you'd expect from a company with 100 plus employees. It just, it's, it's really cool. It's, it's an entrepreneurial spirit. Like you, you're this guy right here. You're doing it. <laughs> yeah, I kind of, I think I, I think out of the box a bit, and I think a larger company maybe, they might have a wish list of, you get of features. But you literally I, can read the forums and go, oh, I can do that. 
that's how most of these ideas yeah, come about. Awesome. Uh, how about global windows down? The vehicles don't have door modules in the rear doors to, to do that. Uh, only the Maserati does. Out of all yeah. of the vehicles from Chrysler, yeah. only they do. Okay. So I can't control those. And the JL, as you know, doesn't have door modules at all, so well, I can't control the front windows. There's that. Yeah. So the answer is get a Maserati, Holman. Or you just use your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. There's only so much I could do sometimes. Right. <laughs> Tell us about uh, SEMA walking around. What are you seeing? What kind of inspiration does Joe Z from Taser glean from a convention like this? Um, I honestly was expecting to see more Broncos, and I could see the Jeep is still quite alive. It's, um, it's, it's amazing. It's not as the vehicles, the big hot hotness vehicles, there's not as many as you would have thought. No. The, the old stalwarts that you're used to seeing, F-150s and Wranglers, Camaros, you know, things like that, are all over the place. Right. Are you looking for inspiration with hard parts? Again, I know that's not what you do, but I'm curious if you're looking around going, hey, I like this, no, the rock slider, I like this, wheels, tire package. I don't know, are you being inspired for your own products or... Uh, I, I like to talk to the different vendors and see what it is that I can do to help. I, I was had a conversation with one of the aftermarket radio companies and said, you know, this is what we can do. We can we can read anything in the car and make your radio do something that you can't do. So and for one a... example was the pin code. I said, put up on your radio a pin screen. We'll take care of the rest. That's the way to go right there for you is to engage the aftermarket with your product. I think that's yeah. huge. Yeah. We do that's that a lot. I, I, can, I tend to give out a lot of technical information for free to some of the companies. That's okay. Uh, just... I don't know. It's the way I am. Further, if I, if further I have no in interest cause. in doing it myself, yeah. then I'll, I'll sh you know, gladly share the info. All right. Well, good to uh, catch up with you at SEMA, and uh, I'm sure we will have lots of questions in the future and bother you with ideas. Just don't bother me if you forget your pin code. <laughs> <laughs> what, I will not. What's, uh, lightning, real quick, your lamest idea for Josie for the taser. Go. Lamest idea? I, they're all lame for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I've already played around. I hooked the laptop to it right away, and I created my own light show, three light shows to be exact, and I got them doing something that probably I shouldn't, but I, I like that feature that I can, and I'm Joe has no comment. You had a parade somewhere. I did. I had a parade, yes. In his driveway. Yes. Okay, that's fine. I'm a Motor Patrol Association member, so I led the Motor Patrol on a All parade. Right. Well, before you uh, get, get myself in, in trouble, trouble. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, we got some other <laughs> interviews. Many times during COVID and all those little birthday drive-bys, I used to use it all the time. Right. So I did that. Uh, again, I love the mirrors. The one thing I'm excited about with the uh, upgrade is being able to pull forward. When you pull forward towards something, instead of hearing the beep, 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 now my front camera turns on. Honestly, I, like I said in the podcast, that was my favorite feature for the TRX. Heck yeah. I had moved yeah. mine down to the dock and pushed the button every time on ours to get it to happen. And then you forget a couple yeah. times and end up bumping into something. <laughs> yes. What? Isn't that pole, no. right? Never. At, that pole that's only three feet tall at the gas station or, or in front of the Taco Bell. Exactly. And then the TRX is it's, it's a stock monster truck. All right. Well, congratulations again on the success. And uh, we're going to keep our eye on it. And I'm going to install some new features on my T-Rex. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Well, Holman, we finally made it. We are in the Expel paint protection booth, but it's so much fun. Finally more than got a chance protection. to meet Chris Hardy in person. Yes, and ah, he is he's yeah. not just a figment of our imagination. Well, I might be. I actually but are might we, be a figment of your imagination. Are we as disappointing in person as you imagined? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure it's the same likewise. <laughs> oh, you're a lot shorter than you sound on the actual on the phone. No, but the thing is you do MMA and you're you're a fit. Yeah. Dude with some good looking sleeve tattoos. Yeah, yeah. 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 Here's two schlubby guys with no, microphones no, no, rolling no, no, no. out. Listen, we both have a size. It's round. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm in on that size. Yeah, I like this. Yeah, you, you have a six pack, we have uh, pony kegs. Well, well, just a different version of six pack. It's called, a, it's called beer. Yeah, right. exactly. I like, I like beer. I still like beer. So the vehicles, as we roll up, it's hard to miss the, uh, the Lamborghini. That's a Sion, correct? Yeah, so that's a one of 19 in the world Sion Roadster. And those cars obviously are uber money. Right, right now. And this one has a fading paint job on it. Yes. And gold leaf or gold. I'm yes. guessing real gold edges. All of it. I mean, the, the pinstripe on it. The whole thing is just in, it's stunning. So the gentleman that has this car has quite the collection of other vehicles. I would imagine. We always get his vehicles um, donated by him for us for our booth. This is not Manny down in Costa Mesa, is it? No. no. Okay. He doesn't like us repeating his name to be very candid with okay. him. We're going to respect his privacy. But 
Uh, that means you can't ask a second time. I won't. No, oh, you I'm could. I still, 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 yeah, it's still not going to Normally the MO is no lightning, and then he asks <laughs> then you again, again. and tries to beat, sure. break you down. Right. Over I, the course I, I, of the interview. I, that's the MMA style. <laughs> 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 but no, I mean, again, crazy rare car. Every single year, Expel is known to bring a car that's way out of everybody else's reach. Most people come in to the booth in this hall, if you will. If they have no interest in anything in this hall, it's could come see the Expel booth because of the cars. You could almost get in an argument with someone saying this has paint protection film, and they'd say, no, it doesn't. It can't. It's too perfect to have any film on it, and yet it and does. And it literally looks perfect. Like, we walked around, you, there's no, you can't tell. You can't tell in this case. Now, again, in fairness, paint protection film is not always going to have this level of insulation. Sure. You can imagine the budget that this customer has to say, hey, rip it off and redo it as long as it takes to get yeah. every single panel perfect. Now, that being said, I drove cross country yeah. from Detroit and halfway through when I was through Oklahoma, it started pouring rain. Right. So I call up Lingenfelter and I'm like, Dustin, dude, it's raining. Am I okay? He goes, dude, don't even worry about it. You're fine. I'm like, are you sure? Don't even worry about it. The yeah. rain, I was watching all the beating coming off of it. I had gone through a bunch of dust and dirt. The dust and dirt was flying off the back. I pull into my driveway finally, and my wife wanted to see the uh, the 392, and she's like looking at it. She goes, did you wash it before you got home? I go, no. <laughs> she goes, you just drove 2,500 miles, and it looks like it's still clean. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Because other than the windows from the wipers and stuff, right. with all the Expel had been blown dry, and I, that was probably one of the first moments where I'm driving. Like, this stuff's going to be really cool. Now, yeah. Chris, explain wh how that happens. Well, okay, so let's let's go back to the show, right? We were talking originally about difference between ceramic coating and paint protection film. Yep. And I said, look, there's a very distinctive difference between them. But what we did to your vehicle was coating infused film. So that was our big push this year, brought out a brand new product line. Yep. The coating's embedded in the film instead. And look, some people try and call it self-cleaning and all these other terms, but in, in essence, that's what's happening, right? The water's beating up, and in turn, it's pulling the dirt with it as it blows off the car at whatever speed you're driving. Well, uh, Lightning, uh, he says it was a gift from him. I know he's lying because you basically sent him two of everything for him to give me one. I did. And I tried he, to take credit he, for he it. Couched, I, yeah, he couched yeah, it as good. a present, and I'm like, you're lying. Uh, you're lying liar that lies. I, he'd give me that bucket before my trip, so when yeah. I got home, I had it, and I used your paint protection spray. Yep. I wiped, because I can't wash it. Right. He said, don't wash it for two weeks. Don't wash for two weeks. So I used the spray, wiped down the whole car, right. and in about uh, 35, 40 minutes, it looked like it had been detailed. Yeah, I mean, again, big benefit of ceramic coating, whether it's coating infused film or whether it's coating on its own, this is what coating does give you, right? Makes the paint pop from underneath the film or on top of paint to a level that it wouldn't without a crazy wax job. And then again, makes it super easy to clean. If a shop or a manufacturer is selling coating as that, then they're being accurate. If they're selling it as protection, I don't know what your definition of protection is, but to me it scratches stone chips, and hence the reason why I say no. Mm -hmm. That's not what you're getting out of it. One thing I don't know that we ever asked you is if I uh, wrapped my vehicle in Expel and without the uh, ceramic impregnated film, and I it was a year later, and I decided to ceramic coat it, can I? Yeah. Or is there now um, contaminants in the film? No, so the film in our case has got a special top coat on it, which is why it doesn't turn yellow. And so the intention is to stop things from getting embedded in the film. Now, if we're talking like bird droppings that you've left on indefinitely, that's different, right? We're not talking about acidic stuff. But regular stuff, no problem. And you can actually lightly buff the film just like you can lightly, well, in paint you can go harder than a light buff, but you can lightly buff the film. Because it's self-healing, you don't have to worry. You're gonna heat the film up afterwards. Any little scratches that you put into the film are gonna come out of it, and then you can still coat it. And so it's actually quite worth it if somebody's got an older vehicle or an older film job to still get coating done regardless. So I could use a, um, a, a, a over-the-counter yep. polish or a buffing compound, yeah. and it will get all the contaminants out, yep. or do I need to buy your products? Look, we make a film cleaner that's specifically for that. Expel, if you go to their website, there's a retail section for it for the general consumer, DIY kind of stuff, and yes, we have proper paint protection film cleaner right there. So that's what I would use, and if you want to use a buffing, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a buffer or a polisher on top of that compound, no problem. And it will clean the film up properly, and now, you got, now you're good to go. But again, coating should be done, true coating should be done by a professional, right? The DIY ceramic coating is 100% is not the same as what these professional applications are. So one of the, uh, the bottles that you sent along in our care packages was, I think, iron oxide yeah. remover. Yeah. When should I be using that? 
approximately once a month realistically. So what you're going to see is that even coating will not stop iron particles from sticking to it. So whether we're talking about brake dust, we're talking about rail car dust, whatever, it doesn't matter. That particle in particular is so grippy that even the best ceramic coating on the planet can't stop that from happening. So now what happens is you've got all this iron particle on the, on the paint or on the film. Especially on the horizontal surfaces. Especially. Yeah. Or right up beside, behind the tires, mm -hmm. right? And so now what's going on is you go to wash the car or whatever and you see it's not beating. Yeah. So your assumption is the ceramic coating is gone. Ah. It's not. It's just clogged, basically. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it, actually. It's just all these little particles of iron. So what you do is you spray that stuff on. It actually turns purple as it's eating the iron particle. And then you wash it off. And now it's gone, and now your car's beating like normal again. Mm. Oh. So yeah, iron remover should be done once a month, realistically. And then, you know, I sent you the ceramic boost. Yes. Yeah. That also should be done about once a month. And the idea of ceramic boost is just, it's not that it's really improving the ceramic coating over what it already was. It's just kind of like a top coat. So what, what do you use first and last? Always the boost is dead last. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to use my PPF cleaner. Yep. And then I'm going to use my iron, my car wash. And then I'm going to, which of course we have too. And then I'm going to use the iron particle remover. And then I'm going to use Boost after the car is dry and finish it up. But that's all if I want to do DIY. A lot of people these days are having people come to their house yeah. or whatever, and you're just, hey, here's my chemicals. Don't use yeah. yours. Yeah, and, and get it done. So that's funny. I'm asking these questions because I have, and, and Almond's used my detailer before. He's really good. Sure. Well, no, he's my, de my uh, Oh, he's yours detailer. now? Yeah, I stole him from him. <laughs> Sorry. Rob's really good. And he's worked with some wraps, but I was very particular. I said, let me get the low down from Chris before you start working on this because yeah. I didn't want him to botch it and then uh oh I used the wrong So I'm going to have him do yours first and then I'm going to have him come to my house and do And that's cuz he lives by me so that will <laughs> There is a very legitimate concern that people don't understand, right? There's the top coat on the film. The top coat is the self-healing part. The top coat is the part that stops the yellowing because it's blocking the pores of the urethane from being exposed to the elements. The negative is if I put something on top of the film that is not pH neutral and it eats away at the top coat. It can eat the yeah. top coat or it can create what we call starbursts. Mm -hmm. It can do lots of damage. There's many waxes that can do that, and there's even washes that can do that. And so what you think is the guy takes the wash and he loads up the soapy bucket or he takes the, the cannon, the foam cannon, right? And he sprays it and then he cleans it and it looks fantastic. How much of that chemical, the wash, did he actually get off? Yeah. If he didn't genuinely get it all up, which you almost never do, now that's where we have the concern of, uh-oh, is this going to actually end up damaging the film? Hence the reason why we have a warranty stipulation that just says, look, you do something else to the film, we're not saying it automatically voids the warranty, but we're definitely stating that it could. Yeah. yeah. So listen, part of the education is use the right stuff. Yeah, I mean, no matter what manufacturer somebody goes with, they quite often will have a complimentary lineup dedicated to their products. And I say, look, regardless of the brand, you should realistically use their dedicated product because they've generated them just for, for their, their products. Yeah, you've done all the R&D. And I assume all the aftercare products are available on your website, Expel? Yeah. yeah, all the aftercare products are available for retail on the website because a lot of people are, as we said, DIY. That said, most of your Expel operations are going to have in their shop as well. Some people don't want to do it online. No problem, just slide by your local shop. Hey, I want to make sure I'm getting my Expel load up. And pick it up. Got it. Let's right. take a quick uh, a jaunt around the uh, the booth real That's quick. Fun. So this is a plotter. You know, obviously you got to see this before. Yeah, it was but pretty awesome. We've got the DAP showing up on the wall, which is where we can pick any make, model, year of vehicle, motorcycles, ATVs, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and we can put it in, and it will pull out all the patterns that are available, both window film and paint protection film patterns. And so we have a plotter here, which is what is a cutter in essence, that you're going to load the film in the back, plot it out and it's actually cutting the film pattern. Now that pattern, for instance, over here, which is where we have our model who is currently shrinking our film, she's got a pattern window for this Corvette rear window, right, application. This makes it super easy to not overextend yourself and end up having too much wasted material. And in turn, now this is obviously making what she's doing, which is shrinking the film, much easier. Sure. To the next content over here, this is paint protection film installation piece. So what we'll do is if a customer wants to see it, we pull out a pattern hood, lay it on, show how it's not as wide as the, as the actual hood, on purpose, stretch it so that it fits everything properly, and then tack it down. So again, a demonstration yeah. opportunity, which is again what's going on 
next door, which is more demos. This is the paint protection film demonstration as well. So one of them might be used for ceramic coating, one of them might be used for paint protection film, or vice versa. Okay. But you want to be able to demo everything that you have available in your lineup. The real cool part is this Rivian. I do. And what I and why I'm so proud of this is because this is the first time in history that a manufacturer has announced the brand that they partnered with. So when I was true? at Lingenfilter in Michigan, yep. they were doing two Rivians when I was there. Yes. So Rivian is going to be doing their own in-house program, right? With Expel products only. And they're offering both the Stealth and the Clear Films. But the coolest part... And as a reminder, the Stealth is a matte finish. Yeah, and well, what it's doing in this case is if you look, you can see the edges where there's glossy paint, but it's now made it a matte finish. This is much better than a matte paint. The biggest reason is because the problem with matte paint is if I scratch it, nick it, do anything, I can't touch it. I can't buff it. Yeah. It becomes glossy. And the more you wash it, it gets glossy too. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and... Like as an example, right? We talked about how I used to work for Harley. Mm -hmm. They have their denim paints. Yeah. And you cannot, there's a whole thing of what you can't do with the denim paint on a, well, a road glide or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. So it was brutal. Well, now we've got a film protecting it. If you have the denim paint, cool. But if you don't, we'll make it look like denim paint. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but the, again, for me, the, the problem moment here is that Rivian said, hey, we use Expel, and it is the first company that's ever done that. We partner with a lot of OEMs. But as you can imagine, other than Rivian, I can't disclose who they are because sure. they're not stating it themselves. Sure. Gotcha. Yeah. That's a great collaboration. Yeah, it was an amazing collaboration. They worked really hard with our OEN team and pulled it off. So this entire vehicle, from front to back, has been stealth wrapped, right? That's and, our. And this will happen where in the process? Meaning the dealership will do this, they send it out to a third party. What's that look like? Great question. Well, number one, Rivian is a sell direct like Tesla. So there is no dealerships for Rivian. So you go online, you order your Rivian the way you want it, they build it, they send it to a delivery center, not a dealership, the delivery centers are owned by them. Now, when you order it, part of the ordering option is would you like your front end protected or would you like the whole vehicle protected with paint protection film? Regardless, you can order it that way. Once the vehicle's fully complete and assembled, it goes into the installation center and they do the install. The install center is very new. They were getting trained, obviously, to be up to speed in terms of the installation process and ability. So right now they're only offering the front end at Rivian Direct. However, we do the whole vehicle or front end through our our, our customer base, right? In the US alone, we've got over 2,000 shops that are expo. Yeah, and that's what I was seeing when I was there, and they were talking about that Rivian program because yeah. they were doing one side by side with uh, with my Jeep. Yeah, and, and it was so cool because you know Rivian had come up with this price point and it was a, a, a very aggressive price point that a lot of customers we expected to take advantage of it. To give you an indication, and I won't say the brand name, but we work with a number of brother brands, like I said. One in particular is very popular to get PPF done to it, and yet the take rate at the factory level is somewhere around 2.5%. 2.5% of all vehicles, when you order it, get PPF done to it. Now, they didn't use our name as who they partnered with, but still, that specific brand after delivery, or at t delivery, averages more like 40% take rate on oh, paint wow. protection film. Wow. So I'm going, whoa, like there's, there's that a huge big opportunity disparity. right there, yeah. So I was talking to OEM and I said, you know, guys, do you want to show that OEM the difference between Rivian and this? Because Rivian's take rate right now is averaging around 35% factory. Which is a lot. Factory. Which is a it's lot. insane. Never been, never seen numbers like that in our history. Obviously, a very proud moment for us, okay. and you know, well done, it's beneficial. And the coolest part again is that it just has more and more opportunity for everyone, all our interior, all of yeah. our dealer base. R Rivian going out and saying, "Hey, we use Expel." While our customer base went, "Wow, we're getting a lot more phone calls than ever before from yeah. anything Everybody. and everything." Yeah, yeah. Or the Rivian customer who has another car in the in the garage. That was a big part right? of it because now they're immediately exposed to it. Oh, I got to get my other car done too. Yeah, I mean, look. The, I, paint protection film is still in its infancy here in, in the U.S. That's yeah. a reality. Where is it the biggest? Canada. Oh, cool. I think that Canada is where it's best known because in Canada we average more dollars in square foot of paint protection film than the population per year. Wow. 
That's dramatic. Is it because of the roads? They're, no. They, no, no it was because Expel decided to take a very different approach with their dealer base there and say, hey, what you need to do is market to everyone, not just the luxuries and exotic cars. Yeah. And I think that here in the US, a lot of shops in particular really focused on that market, thinking that was the only market that wanted it. And Canada was convinced that that's not the only market that wanted it. Now, do they want to spend eight to 10 grand for a full vehicle on, I don't know, a Kia? No. <laughs> Maybe they just want a front bumper done. But so what, there's still a market. And so that's why Canada has a disproportionate amount of PPF done per, per population. But it's really changing a lot in the States in the last two, three years. Rivian boosted that dramatically. I even had competitive brands, friends from competitive brands calling me saying, hey, thank you. And I was well, like, it's yeah, because it's slopping over into theirs. Well, because yeah. all, all the high tide raises all boats, right? Like that's the whole deal. That uh, awareness, right? Yeah, yeah. Awareness, 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 awareness. And so now I think you've got more consumers than ever before thinking, oh, that's an option. Never even knew about it. Well, Very cool. And for me, just like we talked about before, I wasn't sure it was the way to go. It's on well, there. I think so you were, we're against it even before. We're going we're to test it. I mean, <laughs> he was against it. It's, it's going, it's going off roads, getting used, getting dirty. So. Every time he came to my house, he would take his fingernail and just sink it in and go. I went like that. Mm, I don't know. It time. feels like there's something on the paint. I'm like, I know, I want it there. Leave it alone. <laughs> right. Yeah. Don't pick it off, please. Yeah. I'm like, oh, look at this edge you have here. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, we really appreciate your support. I, uh, I appreciate the, uh, the the getting me hooked up with the guys at Lingenfelter because that process. Being able to be around the shop for three days, it was eye opening, wasn't it? Watch it, watch them, the masters work. Yeah, was, was really incredible, and I'm I'm super happy with how it came out. Now I'm looking forward to going out and using it. So, again, thank you for uh, for coming on the show and and helping us understand this crazy market because we're those guys that should know about it. And we di we didn't. Right. Not and, well anyway. And again, they, they, not an uncommon thing. But uh, Lingenfelter, like you said, real professionals. Partners of ours, as you know, they do a lot of serious builds themselves. Oh yeah, some There's real a serious brand builds. Brand new anniversary C8 that they were doing after the Rivian when I was in there. So yeah, there you go. And so great partners all across the U.S., Canada, and actually everywhere in the world, basically. So thank you as well for letting us work with you on both your builds. It was really, really encouraging for us, and we thank you so very much. All right, well, uh, have a great SEMA, and uh, I'm going to go touch the paint on every car here and figure out uh, which ones have <laughs> expelled and which ones don't. Because you it. can't tell. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Holman, I feel like um, we're ballers because we're upstairs at Real Truck. The last time we were upstairs was uh, the last time Lee invited us into her company. Was that true? Yeah, it was back when we were at that uh, that other company that had us in their booth at SEMA. But now we're at Real Truck. It's way better. And uh, we're upstairs with uh, Lee Reiser, mm -hmm. and we also have Christian Hazel and Vern Simon. So for all you people who keep freaking emailing me, be like, have Christian and Vern on. Yeah. You want to talk about UA? You know what? You, you always make fun of when I do a Southern me. accent. When I go, that wasn't yeah, a Southern that accent. Was you just did an accent right now. Well, that wasn't Southern. Your Southern but accent you just is worse did a dumb than guy. Your guy. It's worse than your Australian accent. You did a guy. Oh. Anyway. Oh. Yeah, all right. Settle down. The point being that we are all in the same place at the same mm -hmm. time here at SEMA, and we are going to take advantage of that. Yes. And we're going to talk about Real Truck and UA and what your experience was and all that good stuff. So Lee's been on the show before, so you're a return guest. Yes. So oh, you, you're gonna, oh, hold on. Let's let's get. You're going to mic her, and I'm going to mic these guys. Well, that's I'm not going to work. Gonna you're gonna, you're going to mic them, and I'll I just mic. Won't yeah. talk. Okay. There you go. Yes. There you go. I got Vern. Oh, yeah. I got Vern. All right, well, I got to get, get a picture of Vern hugging lightning. There we go. It'll be the only hug, hug he gets shot. all day. <laughs> oh, right on, look right at that. the cheek right there, buddy. That's perfect. <laughs> and also a little gross. My wife is going to be so, so upset about <laughs> so that. So jealous. So jealous. <laughs> all right, so Ultimate Adventure happened. We saw the content that came out on social, and obviously we've got stories and videos and stuff coming out, and it looked like an incredible trip. It was a, another great one. I don't know who to blame, but Christian and Trent have really got this pretty well honed. Where yeah, they're, we're, it's a, it was know. a great group of people, you know, like we didn't have any square pegs trying to fit in round holes. Everybody got along. Um, it was a really good trip. Yeah, Amazing. We, I, I kind of looked at the where we've been. I, I have a very involved, intricate method of determining where I want to take the event yeah, every year. Yeah, it throws you know, a dart at a yeah. <laughs> It's a little more involved than that, but... but it's yeah, two darts. Yes. The last, last time UA went to the southeast was uh, 2015, and I was not uh, with the event that year. I took it over the next year, but uh, by all accounts, it rained every it was, single it was, uh, minute. Yeah, it rained. So it was the year that Fred Williams decided to make everybody carry a canoe on top of their rig. It rained every day 
all day, all night long, except for 30 minutes one day, and that's the day that we had the canoes and a lake. <laughs> so like, I have, it was, yeah, foot fungus, like we were just totally soaking wet. Well, that sounds gross. Not, yes, it was not, not so good. I, I was a little nervous bringing it back there, but I'm like, you know what, I moved the day, I, you know, I moved the calendar, so yeah. now it's in September, and we're gonna, day one, what happened? Yes. The skies we're, just opened uh, up, we're like, and it was like standing in the shower. It was It was I, unbelievable. I saw those pictures, and it was pouring. It was pouring in every single one of them, yeah. so yeah. I was kind of like, maybe I'm glad I wasn't there. The funniest day. part about that was our <laughs> local guy, uh, Keith Bailey, was like, drove up on this bluff, like overlooking, and you could see this black cloud, and it was clearly lightning and thunder. Okay, see? But it really made the trail awesome. You it know? Did. So that, that's the thing about the, the, south whale, the southern whaling. Uh, you know, you've got rock crawling, and you've got all these different kind of, you know, di different kind of styles of off roading that you can kind of equate to different. different kinds of math you know this one's kind of like geometry and this one's kind of like you know algebra but wheeling in the southeast is that's calculus man that's like upper level you got to stop you, trying to ruin wheeling for me by talking about math <laughs> you got it you got to have a little bit of everything math. to get it done yeah, yeah. yeah. math is hard <laughs> well mud makes it more challenging oh, everybody's yeah, you like got, oh gosh you got yes. mud you add that factor into your tires rocks are slick, ledges everything. tires yeah and yeah. Then you pick a line and, and the trail goes uh uh you yes. ain't going that way you, you make <laughs> suggestions yeah. with the with the steering wheel on the gas pedal like so in, in moab you're telling the car what to do it's, in the it's south really, you're making you're suggestions asking. yes you're asking yeah. that's a good way to it, put it's it. one of the most enjoyable kinds of off-roading to me yeah, it's, and, it's good. and so you know except yeah. cleaning it yeah oh yeah <laughs> yes so lee what was a uh, real trucks participation in ua this year and and why do you keep coming back yeah so, well, we were super excited to not only be the presenting sponsor with Rugged Ridge, but also with Real Truck, the official retailer. And then we had a couple of our brands also key categories like Infab, the official sidestep, and Bushwhacker, the official fender flare, and then Back Industries, the official truck bed cover. So, yeah, it was exciting for us to be a part of it. We absolutely love the trip. You know, having gone on it, it's an experience of a lifetime. Um, so I hated to miss it this year. I was at Rebel, and then I saw the guys, you know, the first day of the rain, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna miss out, you know, I'll be, I'll be fine. You did you were like, oh, it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and I thought I would miss out on the rain because I'm going to the desert. So the last day of Rebel in Glamis, yeah. literal flash oh, flood. Yeah. So that was the last day of Overland Adventure, the day after, and it was a deluge, and we just missed on OA what you guys went through by like what 18 hours or something yeah, like that because yeah. we were all in the same area at the oh, time yeah. we, we crisscrossed rebel when we were out there yeah no what was crazy is i'd never seen rain like that in california and i'm like flash flood it can't yeah. be that bad no. like the alerts were coming yeah. on and off and so we were driving back in the jeep and there was a road close sign and i'm like we've been off road for 10 days i'm not listening to that and i turn around and the water was so deep i was thankful i had a snorkel i kid you not we were getting up what were you driving for uh, Rebel? So I was in a four-door Jeep JLU. So from, we, we decked it out with all Rugged Ridge gear, um, and we did have the snorkel. And like I said, that was the one day I was like, oh, my gosh, this is a true water crossing. I need this thing. So, yeah. So when are you personally going to go on UA? <laughs> well, I did in 2021. So, I mean. I'm Crossed off the bucket back. list? I crossed it off the bucket list, but I said I would go back. So and where was that in, in 21? Where did you guys go? What was oh, the gosh. plan? Oh gosh, we went all over. We started in Oklahoma and kind of meandered through uh, parts of Oklahoma and down into Texas. And so it was uh, a little drier, uh, a little more rock crawling. Yeah. Um, it's another really fun trip. Yeah, was, really they're all trip. they're yeah. all fun trips. You know, yeah. nothing about ultimate adventures. Good sucks. action. Lee didn't get to drive en enough though. This is true. This is true. Someone was hogging the steering wheel. Yeah. But no, the funniest thing about we we were in Texas and all the guys are jumping in this river and I'm like, you know, I can do that. I can get in. You know, we haven't had baths. I need I need to get in and get the water. <laughs> so the guys are like, yeah, yeah, get in. And so it's dark and I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm ready. I'm getting get in i remember walking past Vern. oh yeah it's super nice chris durham oh go in feels great don't tell me there was leeches or something oh, no. in there it gets worse so i go in worse than leeches way worse i get out and the guys were like okay now we can tell you did you know that the cotton mouse were like literally oh, yeah. in the water moccasins like swimming do. over there i was like in the water like where i just was snakes? for real only, why did it have to be snakes <laughs> It was snakes, worse than leeches, okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs>
No, that was an awesome trip. I think I like Katemsi Rocks. The, the Katemsi was awesome. Yeah. Katemsi is an K- absolutely K- awesome place. Yeah. My my most vivid recollection of Katemsi, aside from the whaling and the people there who run the park and, and all the all the local uh, help we had, was your your tent igloo thing. So tent, I'm a wait, mini- tent igloo I'm a minimalist. Thing? Like so, I'll use just oh, a sleeping a bag cut, uh, or yeah. maybe a tent cu- a tent cot. Is yeah. like luxury camping for me, and Lee rolls up with this, this like apartment <laughs> that I don't even know how to describe it. What's a ship? Oh, is it a ship, ship pod? It's a yeah. ship so pod. Vern saw me all over OA. I it love ship pod ship every day. Oh, I love I ship pods. Yeah, I love yes. my. So so Christian I have Weber. I a business idea for the maker of. Ship we pod. already I've, talked. I've, so Christian Weber is a friend of mine, and right. I told him okay. your oh, thing. I need to hear. No, no, we'd have to bleep some stuff. They are the Taj Mahal of tents. Listen, the thing about the ship pod that's awesome is. It sets up in literally, I think, uh, Vern timed me at OA, what was it, a minute and a oh. half? Yeah, I don't, I don't or, or remember Something exactly like that, or two minutes. We did a video. Like, and then putting it away was the same. Yeah. So two minutes up, two minutes yeah. down. It's insulated. Yes. And it's super warm. And there's no light leaks through, so it's completely dark. And I'll tell you a funny story, because when I would go camping with my dad with my old jail at the rooftop tent, we used to joke that the rooftop tent was the penthouse and the shift pod was the guest house. So my dad would, sh- would sleep in that. And so I'm notorious for you know sleeping in because I don't like mornings. And my dad was still like sawing logs at like 9.30 in the morning in that thing. I'm like, dad, are you getting up? He's like, what? What time is it? Like, he had no sense of time. Yeah. And like, he's like, that was the best night's sleep camp you've ever had. So, And the zipper seal really that nicely. That is one of my favorites. The zipper, so you don't have to worry about scorpions in the desert. Well, and sand. And we saw scorpions on Rebel. So I took yeah, shift pot on Rebel yeah. as well. Oh, OA so. scorpions too? No, no yeah. comment. <laughs> <laughs> Vern was going to eat one, and then he wussed out. He told everybody I was going to eat one. He killed, gonna eat one. He killed two of them, and neither of, uh, neither of them went down his gullet. It's a land shrimp. Yeah. It's fine. Oh, it's you have land. to cook them, though, or you get I'm worms. You oh, wait, can they really be eaten, or are you screwing with us? I mean, you, you can, they put you them can, in lollipops. You can Come eat on. anything once. <laughs> <laughs> once. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I removed the stinger, or I was going to remove the stinger if I was going to eat it. and uh, But I decided it probably was... Yeah, good Not choice. a good idea. No. All right, so we've had uh, Real Truck on before, but if people are listening and they want to go see all the accessories, now within your empire, you guys have, what, 28 brands now? Yeah, correct, 28 brands, and you can see them all on realtruck.com, but we've got a lot of exciting stuff. We're talking about new products here. Uh, we actually had one of our Havoc Off-Road Fender Flares win, uh, SEMA Global Media Award. Oh, wow. So, yeah, they're a retro-style uh, Bronco Flare. They look amazing. So, yeah, we're having a good show, and you guys should check out the new products. We're doing a lot of coverage also on social so make sure to uh, follow us at real truck as well and real truck isn't just a like a parts warehouse real truck is where there's dialogue there's stories absolutely there's deep uh discussion about the products why you want this one versus that one there's editorial i i kind of pissed him off last time when i said you could get lost in the content but i think that's still i think that's a good thing because content you, is king i content think you king. get i want to get lost in a website i want to <laughs> i just want you to get lost i know that but <laughs> sema but i want to spend 45 minutes on a website learning and and real truck is that lee yeah. you wouldn't believe he came with a monkey backpack but he There's lost it, it so i, I released the tail from my belt oh, buckle yeah. i know it's, it's, it's the, the backpack guy, yeah, so he can re- so he can wander off and I, but he keeps coming back and i don't know we're attached by these mics so it's really weird walking around SEMA we clotheslined a couple people on those hover rounds I can see that <laughs> yeah no the nice thing about Real Truck is yes you can get lost in the content but that's not a bad thing we are focused on telling stories about the products how we use them and that's why events like UA and all the you know things that we get to do you know going on Rebel like we like to talk about it you know we're we don't just do this, we live this as well. So, and we're encouraging people to get out into the real and, and all the parts at Real Truck, they allow you to do that. Listen, get out into, wait, did you hear what I did, said, hold on, wait, wait, I'm just gonna real. say, hold on. Most marketing people are like, oh, our product, blah, blah. Lee went to freaking ultimate adventure. Right, if you're sitting in your truck, in your dockers, and you're clean, and you haven't gone off road, she trumped you. Well, listen, she did something a lot of you probably wish you could have done. So she's legit. Real Trucks, legit. So go check out the website. And uh, great seeing you at SEMA. Yeah, same. Thank you guys so much for coming by. Yeah, congrats on all the new products. Thank you. All right, we got to stop here at Alden American to talk to uh, Garrett Harmola about uh, awesome suspension. 
Okay, hello, what's up? What's a, up, guys? It's been a while since you've been on the podcast. I know, I know. Happy SEMA. It's good. Good yeah. to see you guys. Good Can to you be come seen. over here and sit down? Because we're you're really too tall. Let's go, like, man. I can't. My arms aren't long enough to, you're like, You're going to make him up. sit? No, we're, we're good. We're good. Do you good. have a stool for him to stand no, up on? No, 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 no. Do you have stilts yes. that I can use? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, we've got a ton of new stuff. We've got, uh, we're covering Chevy truck now, 63 to 2018. Uh, Silverado, you know, that's a big one. 07 to 18, we've got. That's not a popular truck. By the way, I love 63 to 2018. Yeah. They made made a couple of them so we're we're hitting the two-wheel drive truck market awesome uh ford f-150 ford f-100 we've got kits coming out for those why don't you make popular kits uh, we're working on it man <laughs> we're working on it you know I'm, I'm a truck guy I, I'm, I'm in a muscle car world so we're we're you know we're branching out we're taking our coilovers and shocks and, and getting into some new some places we've been but you know newer later R- model remind the kids yeah. why Alden American yeah. and why your shock technology. Yeah. What I mean, these are beautiful totally. billet pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're bolt on and go. That's my biggest thing. I'm yeah. a car guy, you know, a truck guy. So biggest thing is you know American made. That's who we are. We've been doing coilovers and shocks for 40 years now. Is that all? And uh, yeah, we've been doing a little bit and, and, <laughs> and, and, and just getting after it, man. We got a lot of nice products. You know, if you're looking to lower or looking for a better ride quality, we, we've got tons of you know new shocks and coilover kits that are that are bolt on. You're not cutting up, hacking up get the job done and uh, and have some fun and it's all designed in-house correct yeah in-house man come down we're at signal hill long beach I know California. You guys right by us yeah we moved like maybe a year and a half ago and uh you know we're tooling up were and you guys at gardena before that or something we're like Car- carson carson, carson gardena. Yeah, okay. is this california pompous right here is this yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah so yeah. only if we say the yes, four um, he went be on the southern side of the 405 he okay. crossed yeah. south yeah okay okay yeah. that's yeah. california that's what matters. Um, that's what's up. how do you differentiate from all the other yeah. guys yeah. You know, our biggest thing is is we've we've got a team in place. I mean, we've done our homework. Like we we do our best to make things as bolt on and as easy as possible. You know, there's there's so many good products out there on the market now, but having something that's American made, it's priced right. You know, it's obtainable, it's affordable, and and gets the job done. You're looking to lower and you're looking for a true bolt on solution. That's that's what we offer. That's what we bring to the table. And are you doing adjustable stuff? I'm looking over here. Yeah, and that's, I'm seeing adjustable. That's been what? the biggest thing, man. So we we've, we've you know a lot of our street kits have been single adjustable. We've yeah. got a lot more double adjustable. Um, we've got some new shock technology and stuff we've developed over the last year so yeah a lot more double adjustable a lot more adjustment out of your shocks designed for the street and so forth for a better ride more performance how how does a customer decide or know when they should have single or double adjustable depends on how much horsepower you're running depends on how you're using your vehicle you know if it's a street if it's a street setup single adjustable is is more than most folks need you know depending on 90 percent of the vehicles out there as long as the valving and spring rate is dialed for the car you probably never touch it again if you got the right spring you got the right shock and that's that's what our kit or your make model stuff really delivers you're you're ahead of the game but if you need that additional adjustment hey I need more shock control i need more traction you can do so with with adding a double adjustable shock i'm gonna watch you grow the business i mean you We're came in it, and you, it was like this this yeah. kind of small cottage deal you kind of had a small it focus is. and then yeah. every time i see you at sema yeah it's like hey we just yeah. doubled we just did it again yeah. just, you know, yeah. you're able to do that because everything's manufactured in china correct uh, <laughs> alden american no <laughs> yes yeah, made here uh, yeah. his, his yeah. shirt says yeah. uh alden I american know, not alden joke. china <laughs> it's a joke <laughs> uh yeah, not there, but here. So, so. if uh, people want to find out if you have an application for their truck right now. Yeah, check out AldenAmerican.com. A lot of our new products we're launching here at SEMA is, is on our website. You find it at Summit Racing uh, as well. You know, those guys. Look at you getting into Summit. Yeah, get, getting out there, man. Nice. So, uh, nice. yeah, if you're looking for a performance retailer, check out our website. Find a dealer near you or give us a call directly and we'll we'll help you out best we can. You got guys who can walk them through it if they don't know the exact application or their what they should be buying for their car truck, Absolutely. you'll help them out. Absolutely. I'll, you you may dial in, I may pick up the <laughs> phone, you may get one of our guys that's been setting up vehicles and suspension for the last, you know, over 3 decades. So It's funny who the yeah. guy who runs the joint may be the guy who answers the phone. Yeah, and, right? and yeah. yeah. I know a little bit, but I got my team and, and my, you know, we got a great team and and they know a ton and they've taught me a ton. So Can we come by and see yeah. the new shop? Come on down, man. Let's grab some lunch. Right. Does it kill you that they boarded up the um, the oil patch liquor store on Temple? Yeah, it's it was for sale, man. That's it, California it, Pompous. I don't know right when there, you pal. guys pick it up because they're doing something. It's like it's almost like Breaking Bad in there. Yeah, right. They boarded, <laughs> yeah. Like, drive by it. We're, we're, our shop's right by that right. place, <laughs> and uh, they're doing something. Like they're digging a bunch of dirt out. So I don't know if they're. I hope that the guys who own that piece of property behind it, that used yeah. to be the tire shop, yeah. don't like buy it and just demolish it like that. Hey. So it used to be. Hold on, hold on. This yes. used to 
be an oil rig, right. like a derrick, yeah, from I way, know. way back. Right. And they, then they built, they you know. Capped the well or something like that? Yeah, and they, liquor they store. turned it into a freaking liquor yeah. store, and it had a, an adult section forever. Well, no wonder you liked it no, so No, I'm not much. joking. You could rent an adult movie and buy, like, a bottle of whiskey at the same time. I mean, that sounds like oil, Disneyland. Oil well turned into a liquor store. Yeah. That's the weirdest yeah. business it's, it's model there, ever. Man. They're doing something to it. Someone bought it. Something's happening. All right. So, But if you're by that, if you know where that's at, come down the street. That's where all the Americans are. See, right there. Buy the oil patch. No, let's let's pick up Garrett in something that's a convertible so that he can fit because he's 12 feet tall. Ready. And then we will take him to uh, Mexihanas for lunch. Let's go. Can you do Mexihanas for lunch? I'm ready. (laughs) Right on. We're with uh, our friend Josh Nickel from DZ, and uh, when you came on the show last, you're talking about your lightning that you guys were building for the show. Indeed, and not you, this lightning, different and you, lightning, and you, yes. yeah, a better one that's, that's right. more robust, uh, <laughs> that faster. Lightning, that, that lightning has less range than this lightning. <laughs> yeah, I've got a way. <laughs> yeah, okay, a lot of range. So well, now we're seeing it in person. This thing looks really cool. Thank you, you, the thank wheels you. came out awesome. Yeah, love the uh, two tone black and white. Very yeah. cool. Wrap the roof to kind of give it that that Escalade ish style. Yeah, you know? yeah. It does. Back yeah, heart heart back to that street truck. I I'm waiting for a suspension company to actually have product. I'd like to to bag it so I can drop. This thing it. will look good dumped. It will absolutely. Yeah, so. I know you're working on some new products to debut at the show. Where yeah. are we at? What do you got? So the the elephant in the room is the uh, the tonneau cover. So, so that's that's the new tonneau cover that we we're yeah. talking about that has a T slot, so you can put a rack and things like that. Whatever you want. Yeah. Trifold. Let's yeah. walk over to it. That's the turn. All right, I'm looking at a uh, a trifold tonneau, but it's not in thirds. It is not. It is not equal. It's a 40 20. No, it's a it's a 40 10. It's a 35 60, 60 20. 60, math is no. my strong yeah, yeah. It's a 35 something 35, which is 70. It's a 35 15. 30 50. No, 35 15, 15 35. 35. That sounded like a tire size. Yeah. yeah right. uh, I, I am a journalist and a podcast host because I'm not a mathematician. That's right. I, I have a CFO around here somewhere. We can get <laughs> exactly. to do the math. So. Hinges are beefy. I've seen those uh, on the front door of a mansion with a giant oak entry. You can tell people the load ratings of any product and then and they'll, they'll always double it. or triple it. So uh-huh. like, you know, the, the question we get today is like, can I put my four-wheeler up there? Yes, yes you can. Now if your four-wheeler weighs 600 pounds and you weigh 400 pounds, it's a different story. So yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta build for the what ifs in life. Well, this thing uh, is a super beefy. What are some of the features of it? Obviously we're seeing it right now with the back, not third, but the back section popped up at about a 45 degree angle on hydraulic struts, which looks pretty cool. Correct, Uh, so you can actually, those are quick release too, so you can drop those, and then that piece will always, will also fold all the way to the back. So if you had a, a refrigerator or something tall you needed to, you could do that. The whole thing installs with four clamps, so with you and a buddy, because it weighs 85 pounds, you can take it off the vehicle in a minute or two if you needed to use the full bed. But the features of the benefits of it are really that fact that we have an extrusion with the T-channel all the way around it, so you can mount crossbars like we're showing here, tie-downs, and then you're going to think of five or six things to do with it that I haven't even thought of. Some do. of them illegal. It's possible, yes. You know, um, Some of them where he's nude. Well, yes. No, so. none of them, actually. <laughs> and, and you know, we're a, we're a traditional warehouse distributor company. We talked about it on yeah. the podcast. Our customer base doesn't have access to something like this. And so we were just simply listening to the market because we can bring products like this to market. And it's been amazing reception so far. I, I mean, I think the biggest struggle we're going to have is people want it sooner than we're probably going to be able to deliver it. And also shipping it. Uh, you know, the good news is we have WD partners that, oh, there that you go. we do truckloads. Right, so, yeah. I mean, it's amazing. The difference between a truckload price and yeah, the LTL yeah, yeah. price oh, is all time. the difference. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. the profit. But it's hard getting it in from China because, I mean, getting all this, oh, wait, it's all made right here. The, the, Josh was about to headbutt you when you said that. That was a that. joke. See how angry he got? Yeah, give me a second. Dude, his head turned bright red and he, like, his eyes narrowed and he clenched a fist. I-35 and 80. I mean, that's the beauty. Don't yeah. Worry about it. All right. So. Well, we got We still got to get out there. So yes. I know. I know we haven't gotten out there yet, but at least we're getting to see you here at the SEMA show. So for sure, we appreciate it. All right. Well, uh, have a great rest of your show, and uh, we will. Uh, we'll catch up with you soon. I don't okay. think we can get away f- around all these people standing around this truck. I'm gonna fold the tonneau up or down, and then I'll crawl over to the top of the truck because it'll awesome. handle my weight. Apparently, it will. yes, no problem. 
So I like this area, launch pad. This is my um, favorite spot. This Although is where they don't have me doing judging anymore. They did for a couple that's years. That's smart. I missed that. I'm glad that they. Uh, no, 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 no. I was. You now. I, no, I was amazing. I was amazing. Judge. Were you now? I was really uh, incredible. So that's says they asked you. me back. Uh huh. <laughs> then they Once. didn't ask me back. <laughs> exactly. All right, we're here with. Oh, you got to flip your badger on. I don't know your name. Oh, my name's Peter. All right, Peter. Peter. We're on this side here. So Peter, right? this is a company yeah. called Airflex Systems. How's it going? Right? Yes, sir. And you are basically making a uh, a aftermarket. CTIS system, so the ability to air up and air down your tires on the fly. That's right. And it caught my eye because I see the mechanism, and it's like, huh? All right. Okay. So let's uh, let's tell the people a little bit about it. Now, b before you do that, yes, so Launchpad is an area with young entrepreneurs, right? It's with like Shark new, Tank new, for with SEMA. new products. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's Shark Tank for SEMA. It's it's been. An unbelievable experience. We've been able to get in front of people that would take us years to get in front of face to face. So uh, we didn't win. Congratulations to Track Tire Jack for winning it, but it's still priceless. I wouldn't trade yeah. it for anything. So you are basically creating a device that has air in, air out. It acts as a wheel spacer so that you don't have to make modifications to the vehicle. And it's like a two piece. The back is stationary and basically has the airline into the controller. And the outside piece is just like a wheel spacer that moves with the vehicle. And you've got a system that has a seal that passes air from the back piece to the front piece. And the front piece is attached to the valve stem and spins with the wheel so you don't have to worry about your line getting cut. Did I do okay there? Yeah, I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to walk through it because it's hard to describe but it's ingenious in how I, I know how it's, it's all simple, simple but it's, it's all very sandwiched simple, right? together very elegantly how far would this be if i put this on like say my jeep or whatever um what would the equivalent wheel spacer depth be? is it three quarters of an inch one inch so right now we're at two inches two inches okay we're working on other designs i i think an inch and a half is probably as thin as we can go with this design okay um so you know we recommend with any build you know you plan to stay with that high offset wheel sure. to, to offset it going out too far but the major thing for us was no modifications to the vehicle amazing with some things with with what we do to our vehicles you just never get the chance to go back so with this you can take it off go back to stock and no issues no so problems. if people want to check it out they can go to airflexsystems.com airflexsystems.com is this system for sale yet uh it pre-order is going now we expect to ship our first units out to the consumer second quarter next year awesome Fantastic. all right man we'll appreciate your time thank you congratulations all right thank you What's your name? Flip your tag around here. Uh, I can't oh, see it. Mike. There you go. All right, Mike. Hi, I'm Mike Binko with uh, Audix Automotive. We uh, basically are striving to be the first curated value metric for modified vehicles. I so, don't know what he's saying. Is he speaking English? So I think what he's doing is he's curating vehicles and then assessing their value so they can be resold. That's really good. So yeah. in the secondary market, essentially, you are going to have a database of all the mods that are possible. And rather than Kelly Blue Book that goes, oversized tires, you're going to be able to say BFG 37, 12, 50, Man, 70. You guys, you guys get it. Like, and, that. and that way... You don't have to go off of this 50% of whatever you put into it. There's actually a value based. And so people can get more money for selling their 4x4 when they're ready to build their new one. You got a, it. A lot, a, lot, a lot of times. All right, I know what you're saying now. Uh, good. I translated it into, my, yeah. into myself. What say you about like dealerships uh, who devalue vehicles when they're modified? You're doing the opposite, right? You're like, hey, you put 30 grand into it and so, we're going to. But so here's the thing. Dealerships want to screw you because they want to get more. So how are you going to work with them? Are you going to partner with them for fair this value? This world is changing, my friends. Okay. GM Knowledge is power. and Ford just threw the gauntlet down on dealers. Honestly, if you're not a high-performing volume dealer, certainly in the Cadillac and the EV sure. space that they're going into, what's the future for your service bay and your secondary tertiary Well, we talked dealer? about that. Uh, Tim Kaniskis at Dodge just announced this week that he's going to force the upgrades to the ECU for more power on their electric platform yep. through the dealer because he wants to replace the service that will be missing when you go to EV. Well, we also think modifications in the smaller markets are probably a, a good revenue and high profit margin okay. um, line of business for dealers to start looking into. So the next show we're launching at for dealers is at ADA in Dallas, which is where we're based. Uh, and we have uh, two OEMs that are coming on board already. Awesome. Because uh, they see this as a, another alternate uh, a pressure relief valve for sure. some of the commitments. That what is your background? Because this isn't, somebody doesn't wake up one day and yeah. go, ah, 
I'm probably going to make an app that assesses the value of aftermarket parts in the well, I mean, secondary car market. You're either a programmer, you're a software. Science. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Data, okay. data science and the cybersecurity, so okay. protecting sensitive data in, yeah. in, on the cloud um, and doing it in a way that makes it easily accessible and usable. Uh, Jay, I'm not the founder, um, chief strategy officer, but Jake okay. Hammond is a Jeeper. He's on his eighth Jeep that he bought from uh, Starwood Motors in Dallas. Yep, yep. And Big um, the build sheet, uh, he, ha he had some questions. He wanted to take it to Moab, wanted to know what the gear ratios yep. were, what yep. his struts were looking like, uh, bushings, uh, uh, hub packs. He had to put on a lift to kind of take a look at that. So he's helping Starwood create a better build sheet for these so modified vehicles in, and the value. Method. So the, the second part of this, it sounds like this is a two-part deal. One is I want to sell it, I want to have a real value assessed, real world value. The second part is I had somebody build my Jeep and I don't really know too much about it, but if I go to sell it to somebody, I can show them everything it has. You got it. Because that happens all the time. And as an, as an owner, whether you're a dealer or an individual enthusiast um, of a modified vehicle, you can choose to turn it on or off as a, a public sure. um, metric. So when it's going on the block, and the other reason this happened was when Bring a Trailer got bought by Hearst Media, yep. what, 14, 15 months ago? Sure. We feel there's a lot of meat left on that bone. The beauty of Bring a Trailer, love it, yeah. is not, I mean, great photos, great eye candy, the written prose yeah. of the description, you'll read it and yeah. love it, yeah. but the commentary when that vehicle is in play is priceless. Yes. And it's a social value metric that is really real when you go to sell a modified vehicle. Okay, so now we're talking about the third D2 area. S8, <laughs> that great mods, and we know yeah. the people that did it. The bids yeah. would go brrr, yeah. up. Somebody kind of had a bad day, and a Debbie Downer gets on her and says, well, I'm not feeling that. Yeah. Didn't, didn't really like how they, the down. stance of that right. D2. Um, the bid's just crickets for a while. So you can basically take the social uh, social score, in a sense, or the social interaction, and have that as part of the vehicle's history and provenance. Part of the value. To show yeah. that, listen, these are people in the space who love it, so it's got to be more. And we it. can find buyers who love those mods. Mm. So the ones who commented positively about who did the work and what they did, are gonna be found for that person when they're ready to sell. So, the real third bottom line of this is a social impact. We believe that modified vehicle owners should be living an improving lifestyle, financially, not a debit. Okay. And the way they can do that is when they go to put the asset in play, is maximize the value, have a buyer that is ready to buy, comfortable with the, the reins, and we don't want a big delta, we want eye to eye saying, we're both going to be happy if we're somewhere in here. Let's just get there. And then that owner who sold goes on and buys two more that are at the baseline. Yep. So they're building a portfolio of multiple vehicles. That so now the owner has provenance over what he's built over time. And this profile of yes. Audix goes with that new owner. So it okay. stays with them. All right. So if somebody who's listening to the podcast wants to understand more about this, where do they go? A-U-T-I-X dot C-O. Okay. Uh, that's website. Don't forget the WW. No, w you don't need W's. It's 2022. You don't anymore. No, you it's don't. Fight, fight, fight. fight. We do this all the time, by the way. This <laughs> Just don't say backslash. There's no backslashes on the internet. Okay, stop, stop. We're, we're getting them all riled up now. Just listen, forward slash. Listen, A-U-T-I-X dot com. Audix dot co. Yep, you got it. And obviously through SEMA, we're a Launchpad finalist. Uh, so we, we have loved this event. It's our first time here. We became members last fall when we launched a company. The research team at SEMA helped us with our go-to-market right? strategy yeah. for investors. It's kind of how I come to the equation. Right. Uh, we just talked to Joe and Gigi and the team on the data side, obviously getting access to the SKUs and the warranty and details of the parts. This community, we want to light the lamp on a trillion dollar disrupting industry that matters to this country and others. And we believe that this community is going to breed unicorn billionaires that haven't even been discovered yet, and a new approach to an automotive landscape where modifiers are driving this the This is dialogue. your first time, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's definitely, he's got this He's got this pitch down. No, no, I'm just saying that that's not the first time you've, you've delivered the pitch. I'm very impressed no, with No, he's got the elevator pitch down. He's timed it. He knows yeah. from first to the 23rd floor, he's got X amount of seconds yep. to deliver and this. here we go. But I've been to many industry events like this. Like, SEMA has captured the essence of its core community. It's enthusiasts, right? We all are. But when enthusiasts often have to engage with other enthusiasts, there's a bit of an ego factor bit. of like, I'm gonna get yeah. the best of this. We want a more collaborative spirit. We want the folks to respect each other, the work that they do, the provenance that these vehicles represent, and it is art. So the fourth level that we haven't gotten to yet, and this might be another podcast, NFT, non-fungible tokens, yep. technology term. What it means is that curated value, that modified vehicle should be considered a piece of art. 
the people who did the work on it are Picassos and Monet and others. Not all of them. Yeah, I've, I've seen, seen some, some of them. Some bunk ass <laughs> civics driving around my neighborhood. So, 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 uh, every artist started somewhere, right? <laughs> you see the sketches that Picasso did that got thrown away and now they're worth a million and a Bunksy. half, right? Not Banksy, Bunksy. <laughs> yeah. You put the bug on the top of your insect uh, fleet vehicle for your terminating thing, that's a modification that someone might pay a ton of money for. All right, we're done here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, we appreciate your, uh, Mike, Mike yeah. we appreciate your time. That we was an awesome, dude. Thanks, guys. Awesome pitch, man. A-U-T-I-X dot C-O. Yes, sir, thank you. No W-W-W. None. <laughs> None. <laughs> What's your name? My name's Andy. Uh, Andy Owl with Glue Tread. All right, glue tread, tire right. repair anywhere. I what have does seen that these mean? guys all over my freaking Instagram and my Facebook. They won't leave me alone. Because they know you get flats all the time. No, because they know that I love off roading and things like that. They and that's know what that I, you're bad with tire care. They know <laughs> that my job is off roading and they're like, we want him to buy our stuff. So I built a brand new toolkit with everything. Yeah. Right? And I've got, you know, the valve stem replacements. Yeah. I've got plugs. Yeah. I've got all the stuff I need, plus yeah. all my tools, blah, blah, blah. Right. And I keep going, and I'm like, do I really want to do the glue tread? I get really close to pushing purchase. I'm like, nah, I don't know. So you don't have everything. I thought you said you had everything. Well, so here's the deal. Hey, I, this is what I, for people like me who've been watching your freaking ads for like a year all over their socials. <laughs> yeah. Push me over the edge. Sell me. Yeah. Right, my, my day job is I run Four Wheeler Magazine. Okay. All right. That's my day job. Cool. So I've seen your stuff. I get how it works, I, but I'm, yeah. I need you to, I'm on the fence. Okay. So do you, are you familiar with the Rubicon Trail? That was a rhetorical I, question. Yes. So, yes. so the Rubicon Trail, uh, about no, a couple weeks ago, we went to Loon Lake, slashed all four tires, <laughs> all four 40s. Awesome. There's okay. There's a video of that playing right here. Awesome. And uh, we ran the entire trail on four repaired tires, um, all out of one of those $40 kits. So one kit fixed four tires, and we ran the whole Rubicon all that. I mean, I, I literally was like, I have plugs. I have slime. Well, I've got what's, valves. What's the difference of plugs and slime? Explain what these are because we I look don't over know. here. Yeah. So I mean, I think plugs honestly work great, right? Anything in the treaded area, like. All right. Yeah. So buy plugs. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> buy plugs and walk a little sidewall damage. You can't. You can't do a good plug on a sidewall. No, you can't you do an right? interior okay. repair exactly. on a sidewall, right? Exactly. So normally they tell you just throw the tire away, right? When you get that. when you get sidewall damage. Yeah. Yeah, and that's fine once you're home. But like, how do you get home, right? So um, it, obviously, as you know, you put plugs in the side and it just yep. keeps ripping out yep. and all that so this is a repair that can be done on the trail it takes like five or ten minutes um, it can be done on the trail and without taking the tire off the vehicle you put the patch on there you're back up and running in ten minutes and then you're back so on the trail. essentially it's an exterior yep uh, rubber patch that goes over whatever your your slash is on your sidewall I have to ask you what ex-girlfriend inspired you to do this? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually my dad. My, my dad and I started this together okay. uh, in in Hiram, Ohio. Um, so literally, like in the garage, like the, the whole thing. He put a you know hole in the sidewall of an ATV tire that was brand new, and then took a lot of different ways to get there. But eventually, got here to, to these this series of products. And your adhesive is basically your t you've got different shape of of a rubber patches yep. that you can cut to size, yep. and then you basically have an adhesive that bonds it and cures to the rubber sidewall. And of course, this isn't a permanent repair. This is something that at some point you will want to replace, but it's good enough to get you off the trail and get you where you need to go, right? How is this different than a, uh, a, a patch kit that I would use for a bicycle tire? Yeah, the biggest difference is the type of adhesive, right? So the adhesive used for a bicycle tire is like a rubber cement. This is a cyanoacrylate. It's in the same family as a super. Say that again slower. A cyanoacrylate, also known as a CA. So it's, uh, it's in the same family as that. Um, this one is specifically for rubber to rubber use. It's fast drying and put a lot of time into making sure we had the right one here. Sure. But it actually bonds into the rubber here, as you guys can yep. see. So it's basically, is it melting the rubber together? That's a good question. It's kind of like, it's kind of like- um, Curing the rubber together? Yeah. It, <laughs> Intertwining those the all, rubber. Those are all good Sticking words. Sticking the rubber together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a, like kind of like an ambient vulcanization, right? So where there's no heat involved, but it's like a chemical vulcanization that creates, you know, makes two patches one. Yeah, simply put. Very cool. Yeah. And yeah. have you tested it on all sorts of different compounds? Every manufacturer has a little bit of different yeah. tire compound yeah, and, and totally. no, no issue there? Totally. There are some really old ag tires that yeah. it, that we just have had trouble with, but nothing nothing you know in the wheeling space that we've seen any trouble with. So, yeah, whatever it might be. So, I, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to forget because it's the end of season my brain shot, but when I see your ad next, yeah. I'm going to do gonna, it. You're going to push the buy button. I'm going to do it. The shop now button. I'm going to do it. Perfect. I'm going to do well, it. Well, and then you'll have everything in your then kit. Then I'll have everything in my kit for all my wheeling. <laughs> hey, so when you are deflated, right, yep. you're in sand or whatever, yep. and you, you're air down, 
how do these conform with the tire or will these can these pop off or is it like it's so adhered that even if you contort that tire right where you've patched it yeah. it still stays on yeah it's a great question we have a lot of footage of that specifically from the rubicon but you can see where the patch actually folds around with a tire as you're going over the trail or whatever it might be yeah so okay he's already thought of it all right well i guess i have to go spend some more money now yes, i wasn't do. sure because i'm like ah oh, who why do they keep spamming me with these ads and then <laughs> i'm like i know that logo i gotta go talk to that guy over there so <laughs> perfect andy, andy nice to meet support you, this young strapping lad right all right here. fine and you got it i'm gonna be hey, a customer man appreciate both yeah. you guys thanks Thank for you. Bye. Yeah. Um, all right holman why are yeah. you hugging this woman over here like uh, lighting. hi yeah, that's lighting yes <laughs> See? Okay. So, all right. So, Sue, yes. Sue's the piper who owns Demos. Yes. And we've had you on, and you yeah. make really cool shovels, shovels right? Shovels. So, but you're, shovels. Put a shovel on it. But you're in Launchpad now. Well, was Why? in Launchpad because Launchpad went down last night when the audience named the winner in the second. And Demos Pro Shovel Tools came in second. Oh, that's and so my good, though. Good friend, Kevin Robinson with Lift With Track won the award of audience choice and this year's Launchpad winner. What product have you, uh, are you putting out to the masses now? Okay, so we have been innovating. We've been in the shop in R&D and just been busy at work. And so we brought to the show the Stealth and the Delta shovels, but also our brand new products, which is the Compact Delta for the UTV and side-by-side -side market. Okay. We made a compact mount, we made a roll bar mount. And honestly, at this point, we're just innovating and putting anything on the end of that awesome telescopic handle. You know, Chip Foose, um, as all the judges are, they're all um, amazing judges and people, really incredible human beings. But on top of that, they're mentors. And, you know, Chip, from a design standpoint, when I first pitched in July, was like, you know, you need to basically, you know, make a broom in a shop, uh, you know, <laughs> shop dust. Like, he's like, I, I want that cool stuff in my shop. Like, I don't just dig. Interesting. You have to make so one just for a chip. He's seeing it, and he's advising me now around the vector of anything that goes on the handle. So we're really looking at what he, I mean, I heard what he, he came over and advised me for about mm -hmm. 30 minutes today. So you're going to come up with pool cleaning equipment. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm not going to tell you all the stuff that's coming out, but it is badass and cool. And really, I think the thing is, is that since... There are so many people here who have amazing shops. The ability to take that same system to your shop and it's just like matches everything else and all your, your tool cabinets and stuff See, like that. You, you, thought you, you, just matchy, matchy. Cool. you thought you were making snowboard I'm very shovels. I'm into matchy-matchy. Yeah. You, you just well, thought you were making snowboard shovels to start, well, right? We made snowboard shovels and we made you know, we made camping shovels, and we made prepper shovels, and we made and now you're gonna have like a line of stuff. We got shovels for Baja racers, and we're gonna have <laughs> shop stuff. So Amazing. yeah, yeah, it's, it's really been fun cool. to watch you grow. It's been fun to watch all your success. Thank you. I mean, you're li literally everywhere. Like I see you all the time on Instagram with all, and we all know all the same people. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, are there three of her? There might be three <laughs> that of her. That would be weird. I don't know. It would be weird. <laughs> time traveling. <laughs> Woo! -hoo! <laughs> awesome. Well, congratulations She's on hitting second. The shovel of the future. That's how she did it. She yeah, she went in the future and came yeah. back. That's right. That's future well, Susan. Well, you know, because it was like 110 years ago that somebody made up the first e-tool. And so I was like, you know, yeah, back yeah, to the future. We need to change time that. Time to make the e-tool better. Time to make the e-tool better. Right now. Right yeah, now. Let's do it. Now. Let's do it. Game on. It's so good to see you guys. Yeah, Seriously. Having fun. When I didn't even know how to spell four-wheel drive, you had me on that <laughs> show, man. And I laughed so hard, and I felt so lucky. Oh, and well, I we appreciate that. I appreciate what you do. I love Truck Show Podcast. Thank you for the uh, nicest thing we've heard in at least Look a year. Look at him, and he's blushing. Oh, oh, he's turned around. Oh. You guys are the best. Well, thank you. Yeah, just you create so much community in our industry, and I really appreciate it. And for the first time, did you just hear that I just said our? I our. love it. Oh, I yeah. know. You're in the circle. I know. You're it one just of us. happened. Well, where, where does someone go shopping for the, some of the best tools on the planet? They come to Demos Pro Shovel Tools, and if you see you want something that you don't see that we make you send susan at demos collective an email and you just say make this i'm going to start make working on that tonight susan. <laughs> i am going to have okay. a <laughs> we should come up with a list of 10 things she needs to make so she's just going to she's going to cave under the pressure of anyone that goes i want a, a beer koozie made out of aluminum 
<laughs> done. <laughs> that it, that's done. Quit, but it has, done. That has to have a shovel. telescopic handle. Yeah, yeah, telescopic <laughs> handle. <laughs> <laughs> what a shovel. That's awesome. <laughs> shovel everything. <laughs> that's your new oh, t-shirt. Shovel, shovel everything. Shovel everything. <laughs> I, love <it>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes. Shovel everything. All right. That's going place. I don't think this interview can get any better now. I think no, we, we, this is where we stop. All right, this, we're getting a hugger and we're going to leave. <laughs> right. oh, give me a hug there. You guys are the best, man. It's good to see you. All right. Have a great day. Thank you. Hold on, hold on, stop, stop, stop. It is tactical. Periscope up. He's not looking this way. Go, one, two, three, go. He's not looking. Go, get him, get him, get him, get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. I was totally raping you. Did you see that? I was already... You had cat like reflexes. Oh, yeah. uh, the cat had three legs and was almost dead. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Chopper? As he What's out up, his Chopper? What were you eating when we bum rushed you? A healthy granola bar. <laughs> no wonder. You know what? You should choke to death on that thing. But we just had the delicious tacos up a store. All right, all right. Around the corner down there, you know? Right. Yeah. I had some pizza over there yesterday. I thought you were just being a preachy bastard with that Are granola crab. Uh, we God. miss you. I miss you guys too. So, what's up, dude? Long time to see. We're just holding down our piece of the earth here at the all old right. deck booth. And, uh, You've got some innovations going on over here? We've been innovating. Yep. Yep. Name one thing. Go. Uh, it is the end of SEMA, you can tell. Uh, you see him? He's, well, he's choosing he's which ones he wants to go. go. Nu <laughs> nuclear fusion. We're working on that right now. Nice. How about something that's more attainable to the average uh, truck guy? <laughs> I don't have uranium handy. Oh, well, you got the... When uh, you said uranium, that's not where I thought you were going, by the way. Just, just I so do have uranium handy. Yeah, easy. Easy. Uh, well, we got the cargo glide by DAC. That's a new thing This here is the, at the new show. design, right? That's uh, the new design. We've uh, been working on that since March. And did we talk about the acquisition of Cargo yes. Glide? Okay, I believe we make it sure. Yeah. yeah. We, um, great company, great product, great brand, and we're just here to kind of blow it up a little bit more, and people are loving it. We're feeding the mayonnaise to the tuna fish. Where, when, at what point? Or did you peanut get butter to, to the dog, if you know what I mean. At what point did your pockets <laughs> become deep enough to be able to uh, to start acquiring other companies? Oh, that's top secret information. You know, I'd say that it's been pretty good, and the business model seems to be holding up over time, and the growth has been really good. The last couple of years have been solid um, to very solid. Like, <laughs> it's very kind of solid. Looks, looks like an EKG machine sometimes, but uh, yeah, we just. I noticed our toolbox has yeah. uh, been upgraded. Well, you guys have seen that's version 16.5. We saw version 0.5. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's been uh, that's been improved dramatically Iterated. since you guys first saw it. Are you guys right. still in the big box stores? Because you had it as part of Home Depot. Yeah, yeah right. you can go into Home Depot and buy it right in the store now, especially in Southern California. Uh, well, I wouldn't know. I don't have a Home Depot one mile from my house in Southern California. Yeah. Oh, wait. wait yes, we yeah, do. Exactly. Yes. I think they're one mile from every house in Southern California. Yeah, they're smart like yeah. that. And so, what has been improved upon? Because well, I'm looking right to be now. Frank, I was pretty impressed with the first gen. I can see the uh, the track right on the front, so you can attach things like that axe. It's pretty cool. Yeah, looks like the uh, coined underside might be a little bit different. Are you going to let him tell the story? You're just going to uh, butt in. Nothing <laughs> you'd probably notice, other than we've changed a lot of little bits and pieces in the hardware. We've changed the gasket that seals the lid, so it closes and opens much more pleasurably now. Um, it's uh, it was always waterproof, but now it's really waterproof. And we made some small refinements to the ladder. And then, like you notice, we've added core tracks to the face. Uh, we've got like, a little clamp system so you can put your ax on there because that's super tough. And uh, a couple new little accessories, but overall, it it's, looks the same and uh, performs even better. And people have been loving it. I mean, it's actually really started to pick up in the last uh, six months, seeing the order of velocity increase. And it's, you know, it's pretty cool. I've had a lot of people in here this week that are Ask them about getting the display for their shop. We've got a really cool display program. It is a and, cool uh, display. I like how you have it two tiered, and the top one is high enough pickup bed height so you can show off the ladder. That's right. The top one's for showing, and the bottom one's for selling. So you always have a toolbox on display, and then you just get another one and drop it in a spot. I wonder what the inflection point will be when you take over all of the steel toolboxes. Well, I think the steel toolboxes, we've got a long ways to go. <laughs> that's a, we've got to figure out how to get in that four or $500 price point, because that's really where the meat of that market is. Gotcha. But um the premium thousand dollars still has a good has a good appeal, and uh, we're going to go to work next year uh, to try to figure out how to get to that five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars price point, and see if we can do it. You're going to have to thrift quite a bit out of it because there's a there's a lot going on in that toolbox. There's a lot going on. This toolbox, um, yeah, it's a little bit of a Frankenstein that got turned into a groomed man, but certainly <laughs> starting over again, we'll know a little bit better on how but to make it has, you know, uh, cost effective. Champagne taste, I'll say. He does. Yes, <laughs> um, we're. Not getting rich on selling it, but it's a good product and we're happy to have it for the customer. And it's really cool because now you can see something we make above the bed rail of the pickup truck. Is there a, a future in which the cargo glide and the decked become one? 
Uh, I think it's getting closer. We do have some things in the in the works for next year, and uh, I can't really talk about it today because you know if I talk about it, it'll curse it, and it won't happen for a year from now. So uh, we do have some ideas on how to better integrate those two products and make that that sliding tray, which is really popular, um, especially in the work like the construction and commercial space, uh, really appealing for the uh, like the more recreational good times crowd. So Greg, wait a minute. I'm looking at the D bag in the in the uh, one of these drawers here. And inside is nice what? Colorway. That thing's cool. It's Wait like a, a uh, khaki Army green, green khaki with green. a orangish red on the inside. So inside, what's going on with bags here? Well, we partnered up with a company called Uncharted Survival to make an everything you need to put in the back of your car a survival kit. So if things go sideways, which they seem to be going sideways more and more these days, if this is in the back of your car, you basically have enough food and water for a day. You've got eye protection, gloves. Uh, stocking caps, you've got a battery charger, and of course you have like first aid and all that kind of thing. And then there's a knife and there's a radio and there's- These are all sealed in waterproof bags, which is amazing. Sealed in waterproof bags, categorized by first use aid, and need. warmth, yeah. food and water, tools, and- Air and vision. Air and vision. I love and, it. and it's got a menu on the bottom of the top of the D bag. So I can just at a glance see what I need and and it tells me how to apply certain things. I think that is if I cool. skinned my knee, what do I need to and do? And then an anodized handle, that is super rad. What does what's retail on something like this? That's about six hundred bucks. The cool thing about it is you get a two hundred and fifty dollar bag and then about it's actually about three hundred fifty dollars worth of really well curated survival stuff. So you could just actually take the survival stuff out of the bag and use the bag as the bag and then put your survival stuff in some other thing. Um, but we wanted to provide basically, like, you know, something that's super organized because that's sort of our jam. And it also covers all the bases because that's what Uncharted does. Uncharted Survival and Deck, uh, the survival kit. Rad. Brilliant. And then you pulled out this other bag. It looks like a Boxo uh, kit. I love these like things. like a rolling tool bag. Yep. This is an off-road tool kit that we yep. created with Boxo. It's a... Another really well curated set. These are tools. And Look at you doing all the collabos. Yeah, man. Like some great partners out there that worked with us, worked with us this year to really bring, you know, what people are asking for and what they need and things that we're never going to make, like tools. But all our customers are need tools and they all have tool rolls. And so this is a the soup to nuts, everything you need. And will is it designed to fit inside the drawers? It is. It's designed to fit inside the drawer and. Um, you can actually store it in the back of a drawer because you're probably not going to need it very often. But when you do, this is what you need. We've got box wrenches. We've got you know hex keys. We've got socket torques, wrenches. Sockets. Dude, look at this. All the goods. This is a beautiful half-inch drive right here. Can I have this one? Yeah, sure. Go beat, go beat <laughs> people to the head with that thing. <laughs> well, it is Vegas. You do need protection. But this was done with Ricky Carmichael and uh, Blake Wilkie, who obviously know their tools and know what you need. And it's got so your basic tool roll that you would expect with all those things. And then in here, you've got oh your uh, sockets, impact drivers. Yep. You've got your lug nut wrenches or sockets. And then this is pretty cool. There's, couple hammers but it's actually got this really bitchin pry bar so you know when you're working on something yeah, that's you need, the, like, the collapsible claw style which yeah. is a huge off-road uh, I've got one of those in my kits very smart to have on uh, on board yeah these guys really thought of it all then a comprehensive plier snippers you know clipper set there's an electrical test are you selling this roll as a as a in a tire kit uh, this is a kit yep and this is this is about 600 bucks as well yeah I mean basically a tire plug kits in there uh, it's got electrical tools, so you can test circuits and all that kind of thing. Can I buy this online today? You can buy that right now. Right now, right now. I want to watch you do it. I am. You want my credit card? Can you take your Let's credit card? Yeah, I'll take all your right, credit card. You don't even need that. <laughs> I want this. This is rad. Uh, he's doing it. He's charging my card. Here we go. 3713216. Yeah, exactly. All right, stop, stop, stop. I'm going to buy you one too, Holman, just because I love you that much. I have actually looked at those for a very long time. Well, maybe this is what you guys get for Christmas. Oh. You guys been, have you been good good young men? We Not really. We're going to no. try harder now, starting now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We only have a month, All right. a month and a half. But we miss you. We do miss you. We tried to come by yesterday. You weren't here. I was out uh, doing some stealthy uh, research in the uh, Central Hall. Uh-huh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I'm glad you came by. I was starting to get my feelings hurt, you know. Is it, almost, uh, is it almost beer 30? Oh, man, it's always beer 30. But they make it really hard here. <laughs> I tried to go down and get beers for the guys in my, in my crew. We had 10 people in the booth yesterday, and they'd only let me buy two beers at once. So I had to go to 
five different cashiers <laughs> by two beers at a time. It's a lot, it took a long time. A lot, to make, of, a long a lot beer of work. Run. A yeah. lot of work for beer. And very expensive as well, I might add. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, that's a steak dinner. Yeah. All right. Well, we have like 200 more feet of the show to do. All right. So we'll catch up with you later. I'll we have miss beers you. when you come back by. Okay. Deal. All right. Holman, I feel like this area has been clear cut. There might have been uh, trees uh, I and see uh, decorations. Station. So yeah, when I was here. here earlier in the week, the Overland Experience area had all these really nice fake trees to kind of make it feel outdoorsy. Mm -hmm. And we're looking across the way at our friend Rory Connell's oh, booth. Oh, well, there's all the trees. all the trees are in <laughs> his booth. I wonder Which means if... that our friend Britt at American Adventure Lab has no shade. <laughs> uh, we sort of get the benefit of being close to the shade, you know, so better a better little bit shade than none. I'm surprised he didn't grab that giant mammoth down there and bring it over here just no, for I'm the sure wilderness he effect. Tried. Did that happen during uh, a, a buzzed adventure? Do you know? Was he was, yes. he, was he maybe drinking? Did you know how I know? Because I mean, you, you know Rory, right? I, yeah, I texted him yesterday because I said, Rory, Rory, and he walked away, and then I texted him, I go, fine, walk away, and he goes, like, 30 minutes later, he's like, what, what did I miss? He go, me yelling your name? He goes, oh, I'm drunk. <laughs> well, have, have, have 12-volt fridge, we'll have beer. <laughs> yes. That's how that so, works. Britt Manzel, American Adventure Lab, what are you up to? What new innovations have, have uh, come splashing out of your head into the truck world? Yeah, so we, we finally got to put a Gladiator in the booth this year. Due to COVID last year, we couldn't get parts, couldn't get shocks, that type of thing, so we didn't should build out the gladiator this year we have it here we have an all-new mounting system for the bed of the truck we have several bed modules as far as drawers and slides and mounts and racks and all sorts of things so cool new stuff happening on the gladiator well let's take a look all right so what's the foundational piece because you have innovated something that is so freaking awesomely simple and smart that other people are coming over here going why didn't we do that and you're like ah patented sucker you called it foundational Okay. Yeah. Well, not surprisingly, it's called the BASE system. So B-A-S-E for Bed Attachment System and Equipment. So what it is, it's basically an assembled lattice work that you put together at your home and it lays in only one spot in the bed of the truck. So you can't put it in the wrong spot. When you put that lattice work in there, that's your template to drill all your attachment holes. So then you can drill whichever holes you need to attach the components you want to use. So for example, our slide that's in the back of the truck now, 48 inch long slide, it only uses six bolts. So you could choose to drill just those six bolts or you could drill all the bolt holes that are provided in the template. But the cool thing is once you drill those holes, you go down below the surface of the bed and we attach a long 3 16 steel nut plate. So what that does, that distributes all the load across a really large surface area. So a lot of the truck beds are aluminum, they're thin material, so a nut search's not going to do the trick. And you also don't want to have to go find a buddy to hold the nut on the bottom side of the bed every time you want to take your components in and out of the truck. So with the base system, you don't have to do that. Super simple, doesn't leave anything protruding up into the bed surface when you're done, and uh, it's a good way to get your gear in and out pretty easily. Can you show us what it looks like? Absolutely, sure can. So what you see down in the bed, right now you can see the heads of the bolts. So we have six bolts holding the slide in, and what that does, that connects everything to the bottom. So those 316 steel plates span about uh, eight to 12 inches of, of surface area, and uh, that makes sure you've got something nice and firm to mount on the other side of it. And what material is this so it doesn't rust? So all of our brackets and all of our mounts are all 50-52 aluminum. Most of it's eighth inch, depending on what we're doing. And we found that's a good blend of strength and corrosion resistance and, uh, and doesn't get too heavy. Beautiful. Now in your truck right here, you've got the slides in here. You're showing how you've got your fridge slide, you've got your you know red boxes, as you call them, of a famous tool supplier yes. uh, are able to be mounted. And then what are you touching right now on the bed rail uh, of your truck? Because okay. that is pretty freaking awesome so, also. So that was, that was patent process number two for last week. So what we do, most of the current truck models that are out now have a plastic cap over the bed rail. So when you remove that plastic cap, that exposes a lot of holes in the top of the Holes, sometimes rail. honeycomb, sometimes. Yeah, they all seem to be a bunch of different shapes. Yeah, because but. it's basically the outer bed and the inner bed and something holding them together with a huge gap that collects all sorts of dirt. There's no structure in there. That's right, yep. So, so what we do, we use those holes in the top of the bed rail to connect our new bed cap 
with uh, angle brackets down below. So what we do, we end up sandwiching the top of your bed rail, uh, which creates like a three-ply version of a, of a mount system. All the holes that were holes on top of your bed rail are now mount points. So, you know, a lot of truck beds have 30 to 40 holes in those bed caps. So imagine all the places you can then mount bed racks, tonneau covers, all that type of thing. And the finish, what is this coated with? So that's a, a polyurea from BASF, which is, uh, there are a lot of companies that sell that. Line X makes a version of it. I think Rhino Linings has a version of it. Uh, what we found is that we found a very specific tip that you can put in one of the polyurea guns. It sprays a super thin coat of this stuff and gives you a nice texture without a bunch of buildup. It's like bed lighter material, but, but it's still grippy, but smooth. It doesn't have the, the big ridges in it and things I like that. I feel like this is akin to something you'd find on a, um, a, a bathtub or something it's just a, just enough texture yeah it, it, so it's it's a little more bed liner than powder coat but but not a whole lot because we didn't want it to catch a bunch of dust and mud and, and be hard to wash off so it turned out pretty well i know we've looked at it on cad you've sent me stuff and you look what i'm working on i was like oh dude yeah, this is yeah. amazing and a lot of this stuff um sort of started right near the end of sema we we were going to try to hold off on going to the show just because the shop's been so busy and uh, we've been actually doing really good getting orders out, so it's been nice to keep that flow. But sort of the last minute, I knew that we were on to something big here. And, and getting stuff ready for SEMA has always been pressure for us. So that pressure, you know, a lot of times is actually what builds the diamonds. So we've been really happy with what we're able to do in a, in a short period of time. What other applications are you going to have? This is a gladiator that we're leaning on looking into the bed. Uh, what will, uh, any chance you've got RAM and Ford and GM yeah. in your sights? Yeah, absolutely. So, so what we did with patent on was actually the application of an assembled pattern system. Uh, so we'll apply that same type of system to all of the popular late model trucks. So it's, we're looking forward to that. All right, Lightning, look behind you and tell me what you see. I see the back of your Jeep, essentially. Everything, all the accoutrement that you have in your Jeep is right here well, in this JL. No, my Jeep is empty. Well, I feel like your Jeep will soon look like this. I can only hope. But that's JL. not why I brought you over here. Brought you over here because it's a 392. It's a 392. Yes. And I yep. just wanted to thank Britt publicly no, no, no. for Throw encouraging me, me no, no, when no. I said, should I do it? And he no. said, of course. Of course. I said, it. definitely not. You definitely don't want the coolest Jeep <laughs> that's ever been made. You don't, you don't want to smile those. every day. That's right. And anyway, I, I would not have gotten my uh, 392 if it weren't for the encouragement of, uh, of my friends and people like Britt who have said, uh, I have one. Hell yes. You don't, don't. You don't want to not keep up with me, I think, is what you're saying. <laughs> now, so there is something different about this Jeep, Almond, in that mm -hmm. your last, all of your setup uh, that you got from America Adventure Lab was all red, I want to say. Yeah, it had red, match the red faces. So there are alum brushed aluminum faces on all of the drawers. This one has a brownish copper what would you call this very yeah, so, elegant so technically it's called triple bronze it's bronze a, yeah it's a it's a color from prismatic powders uh, but what we try Our to do friends is over at Priz. Yeah. there you go so what we try to do is make this one a little more By the way, if you're cool you call it Priz. yeah oh, Priz. we, we, we learned that when we were talking about that this week yeah. wow i'll have to get in the in the, in the our friend who does marketing so. tim is like yeah, yeah. It's, it's priz, it's priz. Like, what yeah. is priz? oh prismatic yeah, got it enough. But no, we tried to keep this one a little more subdued than some of our previous vehicles and uh, something that you might do for yourself rather than for a marketing piece like we have done in the past. So, Can we walk around to the item that... Sure, which, which right? Drivers or passenger? Side. Okay. See if you can spot it. Uh, well, so far I'm seeing... Oh, by the way, this is awesome. Okay, well, one thing at a time. All right. This so is... on the door pockets, I don't have... I don't know if that's what you're going to show me, but nope. on the door pockets, these are really neat pieces of... Uh, laser cut aluminum that molly panel molly panels but hard so you don't have to worry about your net stretch right yeah that's right? yeah because i have to worry about overhead. my net stretches every day i know i don't does. like it uh overhead molly panels pretty cool oh that is this, really cool uh, jl rear seat delete with a low platform most of the platforms up here and you have this wasted space wow look at all that room back there okay oh my gosh now look look under the driver's seat driver's seat i see a dual compressor arb uh, and now go look system. on the okay. side of the driver's seat. The side of the driver's seat. Oh, I see the control panel and the quick disconnect for air. So everybody, there's other ones out there that are like this. Right. But they're on the passenger side, and there's a lot of other companies oh. using the passenger space for amps and things like that. So you have to choose either or. Nobody was making a driver's side bracket, and nobody was making it where the controls were right there easy to get. So I was like, That's, hey, I got an idea. Nobody was. Now they... Are. So check out, and then Britt took my idea and then leveled it up about 10 because he's brilliant and I'm not. And 
Check out the cool kick panel in the back to protect the filters on it. And you have to have, yeah, because you don't want the uh, the kid getting yep. in the back and putting his seat all the or his feet all the way forward and damaging your. How much are those ARB compressors? They're not cheap. No, they're what, five fifty or yeah, so. Seven hundred bucks. Are they that much yeah, now? Yeah. yeah. We're shipping Ooh. good packs. So all yeah, good they're, jazz. they're they're not uh, so. they're not inexpensive yeah. at all. Well, the the thing about this one is the three ninety two poses some unique challenges yeah. for us. So we've sold a system that goes in the cubby hole below the cargo area in the back of the Wranglers for a while. It's a great system. We've been very happy with it. So that's like my old jail. I had both the house battery from Brit, the his setup, and then also the compressor back there. Can't do that on yeah, the 392. Yeah, the 392 and it's super fancy exhaust. It has all the actuators back there that turn on the party mode. Well, party mode takes up a lot of space underneath the back of the party, party mode area. Well, so Brit so. told me he's like, you, it's either or. You either get the battery or the compressor back here. You can't do both. I was like, what? what? Yeah, and it's just, just a single. Compressor. He had just bought his. Yeah. And he was taking his part, and I was like, I didn't realize that the the drawer. And then we start talking. I'm like, you know what would be really cool? And so anyway, there it is. Yeah, and so so we do the MB Court audio system on the passenger side. Their harnesses are all spec to run all the amplifiers under the passenger seat. So and we couldn't do the engine bay because it's you know it's super hot in there, and, and there's full. a big engine in there. So that left the driver's seat. So we had to come up with our own stuff for that. Is this available? It is. It's on the website right now. Yeah. And so we have a driver side version and a passenger side version. And the cool thing is the main bracket's the same. So if down the road you decide you need to move it to the other side, you just buy the other connection kit and you're good to go. Freaking brilliant. I think that's the that's the best way to end our SEMA interviews right there. It's not gonna get better than that. Oh, American no, no, could, no, no, no. It could get better when Brit offers us beer and pizza. Well, luckily, the fridge is full of Pete's beer. So you guys are welcome to grab all the Pete's beer that you want to grab. Oh, man, I can't walk any further. I'm going to die. I used to joke and make fun of the people in the hover rounds. I want to be that guy right (laughs) now. I ran into a couple of people that I actually know, and I know that they're not, they don't have any, uh, you know, broken limbs or uh, their bunions or corns are, are, aren't hurting, whatever those things are. And they're in those little, are they hover rounds? Is that what they're called? That, yeah, that's one company. The I little did, wheeled chairs. Yeah, scooter, scooter things. Yeah. yeah. Here's the deal. They're everywhere here. It's like Ponch and John blocking the aisle, riding side by side like chips because two old dudes want to have a conversation and just knock people out of their way. Guys, not cool. Yes, well, it is. Unless, I, unless <laughs> I'm you. Unless lightning, I can yeah. do that. <laughs> Listen, I don't know if I have uh, blisters or bunions or corns or anything. I can't feel anything <laughs> below my waist. So um, that means I need to go uh, That's celebrate. That's what she said, by the way. Uh-huh. With some seriously good libations, I'm going to go get some brown water, another okay. big stogie. I'm going to sit in the cigar lounge, uh-huh. and I'm going to be like, SEMA is over. Oh, no, that's it's pre- not. Pretty sad. It's not over. Why? There's more coming. Oh, we have a whole other show, don't yes, we? Yes, we do. That we're recording live. Uh huh. Yeah, the we've got booth. a bunch of celebrities Our coming next by. One. Okay, oh, all right. Dear Lord. I am going to go self medicate and be ready for tomorrow. All right. The Truck Show Podcast, live from the SEMA Show in Las Vegas. Presented by Nissan, Banks Power, and Toyo Tires.